St. Louis, Valley Sports Midwest, the heart of the fan. Sports Midwest. Hi again, everybody. Brad Thompson, Chip Carey. A rainy night at the ballpark last night means both for Aaron Boone and Oliver Marmel a shift of the pitching rotations for the doubleheader today and, of course, game three tomorrow. Yeah, well, it's going to be Jack Flaherty in the first game for the Birds, and you mix and match, you piece it together, and Jack Flaherty, look, he's going to be facing Luis Severino, TBD. That guy scares me. I got to be honest. Don't know what to expect from him. Matthew Libertor is going to be in the nightcap, but the Cardinals need to start piecing together, Chip, some good starting pitching. And let's talk a little more about Jack Flaherty. It seems, Brad, the first inning has been problematic. You can't afford that against a team as powerful as the Yankees. No, you definitely can. And with Jack Flaherty, look at April. The ERA was okay. May and June has escalated. And what you're seeing is less swing and miss from Jack, specifically with this fastball in the zone. The big key to your point is fastball command early on. Can he get ahead of counts and then get in a position where he can finish these hitters off? Well, we'll hope that'll be the case as the hard-hitting Yankees are in town. Hard Hitting Nolan Arenado's on his way out of town. He's an all-star. Yes, he's headed to Seattle as a starter for our St. Louis Cardinals. Alexa will break that down in the studio as we continue from Bush Stadium with game one of our double dip today. The New York Yankees. Alexa Dapp back with you in our Valley Sports Midwest studios. And for Arenado, He's going to be making another trip to the All-Star Game in a couple of weeks up there in Seattle. He's coming off a fantastic month of June. 302 batting average, 7 homers, 18 RBI, and an OPS of 967. That's not how the season started for him, though. He had one of the worst months of his career. To take a look at the season as a whole, those early season struggles saw him hit 231, just two homers in April. But then in May, you saw the rise in numbers, him returning to form. And just last month, he was all the way back to his all-star self, the Nolan Arnato that we are used to seeing. When we come back, we're going to take a trip around the league, a walk-off winner in Cincy yesterday. We're going to show you that next here on Valley Sports. with a two-run walk-off homer. Reds win at 7-5, their 30th comeback win this season. They're rocking the City Connect. The fans going crazy. That's the most comeback wins in the major leagues. When we return, Chip Carey and Brad Thompson will get you ready for first pitch between the Cardinals and Yankees in game one of today's doubleheader. That's next here on Valley Sports. AC Healthcare. You deserve extraordinary care. And by Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the St. Louis area. Find yours at your Mid-America Chevy dealers. Both the Cardinals and Yankees, Brad, hit a lot of homers, but the Bronx Bombers come to town without Aaron Judge. He's injured and on the I.L. Yeah, hurt himself in L.A. running through the fence. That big toe tore a ligament in that right big toe. No timetable right now for his return, but Chip, a, an enormous difference when Aaron Judge is in the lineup and when he's not. 10-11 is the record without him. They're scoring under a run. I mean, a run less per game when he's been out there. They're not slugging as much. They've been gutting out some wins, but a different ball club. The Yankees having to learn how to win without Aaron Judge. Hopefully they don't learn that lesson today. An historic matchup. The Cardinals and the Yankees, two of baseball's most storied franchises, collide at Bush Stadium today. The Cardinals won that one in seven games. The Yankees ran the table in 1928 against the Redbirds. And then during the war years, the Cardinals picked up a 4-1 World Series victory in 1942. 
Stan the Man Museal. Ah, yes, 1943 World Series. The Yankees won that one in five, and maybe the most unforgettable season for the Cardinals, 1964, when they chased down the Phillies, won the pennant, and then took over the world's championship from the Yankees in seven games. Brad, 38 world titles between these two franchises. It really is incredible when you get a chance to see these two teams on the field together. We've talked about it a lot with the new schedule. You get to see a little bit of everybody. Well, you get to see some history out on the field when it comes to the Yankees and the Cardinals. So it's always special when we see our American League friends in pinstripes. And what's really nice is it's a nice day. It is hot. It is muggy. There is a chance for bad weather later on this afternoon. The bad weather here in St. Louis forced a doubleheader today. It's a split bill, 115 and 615 starts. So Jim Hayes, Brad Thompson, and I will be very busy and happy to bring you a great afternoon of Cardinals Yankees baseball from Bush. Yeah the hope is it's a fun long day here for the birds. Traction is something that they've been trying to find. We saw a little bit of it recently on the latest road trip for the birds and looking to get a little bit more of that against a tough foe in the Yankees as we talked about a few minutes ago. Not exactly the same without Aaron Judge but still a very very tough ball. Club. And I think that's an interesting choice of words you made for the Cardinals team and for that man in particular traction. It's been a roller coaster season for Jack Flaherty when he's been good he's been very good when he hasn't been it's been a very tough watch at times. Oh you're right and really Jack Flaherty the last couple of outings for him have been tough last two starts ten and two thirds combined twenty hits twelve burn runs that's not the Jack Flaherty that they need in this one and I think Chip we're going to find out early on what Jack Flaherty has his 16th start of the season you see the ERA approaching five and Jack Flaherty has just had his struggles early in the ball games hopefully he's able to settle in early in this one yeah I think that's a great point as you look at his Hyundai pitch arsenal Brad help him help himself get through these first couple of innings with a minimum of effort if that's possible yeah, against New York. and it's easier said than done right, right? A against this lineup and for Jack Flaherty and, and we've talked to Ollie and Dusty Blake and Jack about some of the, the starts that, that he's had the beginning innings this is not for lack of preparation but for some reason that first time around for Jack has been very difficult. Life's always difficult without one of your superstars Aaron Boone the skipper of the Yankees in his sixth season doesn't have Aaron Judge but does have a lot of thunder in the middle of this lineup Torres Rizzo and kind of Falafa have been swinging good bats for the Yankees who took two out of three from the Oakland A's and they've scored ten runs in back to back games. Yes that is Oakland but still is a major league team and something about which you have to ponder as we meet New York for the first time today. It's a different look on our Dobbs Tire and Auto Center's Cardinals defense. Alec Burleson gives Paul Goldschmidt a game one day off. But also, Brad, good to see Nolan Arenado back on his feet and able to play third base today. Yeah, it definitely is. As you know, he's been dealing with those lower back issues, so he is back in there. You know how much of an impact he can make on both sides of the baseball. So it's a hot, sunny day for Ali and the Cardinals. Let's see if the Redbirds can. Improve on a 33 and 47 record. The Redbirds start play today. Ten games behind the Reds. You heard Alexa a moment ago talk about the roaring hot Reds. They've had 30 comeback wins this year, and they've won their last three games in a row. So we're set to go. DJ LeMay, who a two-time batting champion, versus Jack Flaherty to start game one. Cardinals and Yankees in St. Louis is underway. And down and in. One ball, no strikes. LeMay Hewitt, 227, seven homers, 26 runs batted in. And an even count. It's a spot I'd love to see Jack stay with his fastball down in the zone. He can elevate it later to get his punch outs, but I love seeing that down in the bottom of the zone. On the ground, and that sneaks through the right side. An opposite field hit for LeMay here. So the Yankees have the first hit of the day, a leadoff single, and Jake Bowers coming up. In a ball that catches a little bit more of the plate, you see the glove down there. This one elevating just center cut here. Ground ball through the right side. Positioned is Gorman up the middle. One sneaks through. Jack Flaherty, though, no stranger to the double play. Five of them have come in the first inning because there has been a ton of traffic against Jack in the opening frame this year. First things first, Bowers bats. And takes high and away. If you count hits and walks for Flaherty in 15 first innings this year, counting the single today, he's had 36 hits and walks in 15 innings in the first inning this year. 
And as Brad said, it, it's it's inexplicable. There's <laughs> no rhyme or reason to it. It just has taken Jack a while to settle into his starts. Well, we saw it last time out against the Nationals. You you look at the line, and he ended up giving up six earned runs. Five of those six were in the first two innings, and then he settled in really well after that. But to your point, you don't have room for that. Like you don't have time to fall in a hole like that. I like those couple of back-to-back -back sliders there. You know, Dusty Blake likes that, and he would love nothing more than a quick first inning for his starter here on you know what could end up being a very long day. Bowers playing left field for the Yankees today. A ball and two strikes to him, and he heats him up. Good fastball. Like to see that. Jack's got a good heater. 94 takes Cower Bowers. There's your first out. So we're talking about using that fastball down early, finish him up late. That's exactly what he does there. Elevates, goes two breaking balls, sliders back door, and then finishes with a heater. A good sequence. Glaber Torres has 12 homers for the Yankees. Kind of odd to see this club with two players in double digits in the home run column in the starting lineup today. Torres takes outside 12 homers 32 RBIs for him. This guy gets on base in a number of ways. Not afraid to walk. He's done that 33 times. Yeah, tough to punch out as well. I like to try to stay away from him get him extended maybe get that ground ball. Pretty good pitch not called a strike for Lance Barksdale who's got the Pentagon here in game one. Well, that is one you are definitely going to need and I think if you go back there again show that you can stay there you'll end up getting it. That one backed up and a makeup. Thank you two balls and a strike. Baseball's weird chip. <laughs> Sometimes you make your pitch you don't get it. Sometimes you miss pretty badly like that backup slider and you get it. Let's see if we can execute one here down the way. That's fouled off Kisner's glove and Flaherty back in the count. Two balls two strikes. Something else to think about economy will be extremely important. It's 90 degrees. It is very humid. It's a lot hotter on the field than it is up in the stands. So quick innings would be welcome for all the defenders for both teams today. Well, as you know outside full count as you know too, a lot of the preparation for this ball game started yesterday for these guys too. hydrating for sure making sure you're loading up on all of your fluids because it takes it out of you especially as a starting pitcher it takes it out chip something I know that you take seriously very very important this time of year with summer upon us in St. Louis and a full count pitch coming for Glaber Torres first time is called as he does a little landscape work in the right hand batters box for New York one on one out top of the first just underway here at Bush runner goes swinging a fly ball foul back out of playoff to our right that'll ricochet down to the green seats. And a young fan in the front row came away with a souvenir. She's from Washington, Missouri. It's incredible the research you do before a game, Chip. I got to tell you. Never stops. Three balls, two strikes. Runner goes again. And another pop up again. This one a little deeper back into the seats. And that'll bounce around where a fan from Pacific, Missouri makes the play. Cardinals fans well represented Southwest town here for the Yankees and Redbirds. This will be the eighth pitch for Glaber Torres as Brad said likes to walk tough man to strike out. You're seeing why here. The guys like him are, are so difficult to attack because you know you can't just fill up the zone either. He's got that big time power really have to execute a pitch and he does a good job of spoiling a bunch of them. He is a double play candidate. He's hitting to the most for the Yankees this year. And as we told you, Flaherty with five first inning twin killings. So Jack can't throw over to first without a balk being called, barring a pickoff. Let's see how the Yankees play it. They were running with Bowers earlier. One suspects they'll do it again here.
Big lead, there he goes. And a line drive into center. Good jump. Diving grab. And the throw back to first will turn into a double play. Great play by Edmund. The Yankees run. Good glove work turns into a double play. And New York out of luck in the first inning here in St. Louis. Here come the Cardinals, no score. We'll get the leadoff assignment. He's in right field. Paul Goldschmidt will serve as the DH today. The Cardinals get him off his feet defensively. Nolan Arenado, of course, the St. Louis All-Star starter at third base. With that in mind, Brad, as the Redbirds come up in the first, what's your Toyota key today? Well, with all the storms around, the key is bring the thunder right now. The Cardinals offense does have a lot of that. 109 home runs at seventh in the league and got a chance here against Luis Severino to bring some of that thunder. Severino making his eighth start of the season does, has given up eight long balls so far in his 36 innings of work. Late swing there by Duke Barr fouled away. What does this man feature? Well the Hyundai pitch arsenal for Luis Severino going to get a lot of that four seam fastball and it's a good one down a take from the last couple of years change up slider and cutter as well and that's going to be the pitch that four seamer to jump on especially early in counts likes to throw that up in the zone a pitch new can handle sharply hit toward third but Cabrera's got it and as Waldo makes the play for out number one here's a look at the rest of the Yankees defensive lineup brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers Anthony Volpe is their young superstar shortstop really high on this kid Bowers and Kiner Falefa are infielders playing the outfield LeMay Hughes played second he can play first and Kyle Higashioka is the man behind the plate. This game is interesting in so many ways obviously the history of the Cardinals and Yankees but the two starters Brad this year have really had trouble in the first inning to your point about bringing the Thunder this first inning might be your best shot at Severino. No, it's a great point Severino's got an ERA approaching 12 in the first inning and a lot of damage has been done against him again this is only his eighth start he's given up three home runs also walk six in the first so don't let him settle in. That's got to be frustrating you, you've relieved and you've started in your big league career that's got to drive you nuts because as we said there there really is no rhyme or reason to it. How do you fix that. Yeah it, <laughs> it, it is a maddening one and there are different things that you can try to do in the bullpen you can try to simulate different things but by all regards especially with, with Jack Flaherty I don't know Luis Severino his routine as well but Jack has done all of that Jack is meticulous in his preparation. There's just been something about that first inning and a very good play to get him out of the first inning there with Tommy Edmond. You hope he settles right back in just like we saw him do against the Nationals. But it is frustrating too, Chip. When you come out of the bullpen, you feel great. Uh -huh. you got there on the mound. You, everything was working in the pen, and then all of a sudden you're feeling for it on the game mound. High pop fly, foul ground, long run for Billy McKinney, still streaking toward the netting, and he's unable to make the play. That's... Another swing for Goldschmidt two balls two strikes. So a lot of things to factor in today. Jack Flaherty gets through his first inning without problems. Severino's had first inning troubles. He's also had a lot of trouble away from Yankee Stadium. And this ain't Yankee Ooh. Stadium. Two balls two strikes missed inside. Yeah, don't let him get comfortable again. I, I think that both of those numbers actually pair together. His first inning struggles, his road struggles. You put that pressure on him early and you continue to apply it. And that is something that this Cardinal, Cardinals lineup does have the ability to do top to bottom is apply that pressure. The payoff pitch for Goldschmidt is served foul. He's going to see 10 pitches. That's good news. And Severino's had his share of injuries. Tommy John surgery. He's had lat problems. This guy has had a couple of seasons of 200 strikeouts. You can see the fastball velocity. He's got a good arm. But this year, a 5.25 ERA. And he missed outside. That was a close call at 98. And a start for the Cardinals. A well earned base on balls brings up Nolan Gorman. A good eye here by Goldie. Another guy that spoils pitches, knows his zone very well, and knows that's not in it. So here's Nolan Gorman. He's at 15 homers, 47 driven in. I think from an offensive standpoint, Nolan's happy the calendar has flipped to July. It was a struggle for him last month. 
Way inside, almost hit it. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, it's something you'd li really like to see for the young Gorman is just be able to compartmentalize that month, right? It's gone. It it's done. Everything is done. But he knows that he could do it at this level. We saw him. I mean, he was on a torrid pace early. Simplify it. Find good pitch to hit and put your best swing on. Pull a string nicely. And an even count. One ball, one strike. In the early days of the season, what was so interesting about Gorman, he was laying off the high fastball, putting the ball in play. In June, a lot of swing and miss. Let's see how July starts for him with this at bat. It's taken low. Two okay. balls and a strike. I think that what you're talking about there, too, is that that youth still of the pressing. You want to continue to go at that torrid pace. The opposition makes some adjustments, and the key is just you making those adjustments along the way as well. Short lead by Goldie at first. The pitch in for a strike. That's a perfectly placed 95 mile an hour fastball. And not a ton he's going to do with that. You get 95 in with the fastball. He's also throwing that change up in the same spot. A lot to cover there. He missed a spot, but got a strike. Now the pitch is fought off. Last year, Severino was a seven game winner. He made 19 starts. He held his opposition to two earned runs or less in a dozen of them. And for a Yankees team that's trying to hang in there in the AL East, they're getting by with three very important starters on the injured list. They need this guy and Garrett Cole to carry the load until Carlos Rodon and Frankie Montes and Nestor Cortez come back from injury. Yeah, that's a lot. It is a lot to ask, and you know, is in depth a beautiful thing? And what a great depth piece he is. There's the high fastball. Gorman hasn't chased that a lot, but he did here and is struck out for out number two. Now this is gas upstairs trying to protect. Did so on the last one. Couldn't quite catch up to that. That's one that out of the hand it looks so good. And then you realize you're about halfway through your swing and there's no chance you're going to catch up. Well, Nolan Arenado's had a knack for home runs in the first inning. He's hit six of them. Most of them have been with men on base. That's the scenario here. As he looks outside, ball one. Got to respect this guy. He's been playing hurt since the start of this homestand. Well, he knows the importance of each and every one of these games for the Cardinals. And after DHing for the last couple days, he's back in there playing third here in game one. I'm guessing he DH potentially in game two. Well, and I'm also guessing that he's probably not feeling 100 percent today playing third base. But that's what gamers do, right? You answer the bell when you have the ability to do so. And Nolan Arenado is a guy that wants to be in the lineup. He wants to be on the field each and every day and he'll do whatever he can to be there. Rolled foul. Follow the weather bird as it gets hotter. So does Nolan Arenado at least this year Brad. Yeah, look, April was not his month. That is for sure. May he got hotter, and how about June? I mean, June was a solid one for Nolan Arenado. He talked about it the other day. That first month, that March, April, it was arguably the toughest, the worst month of his career. But he was able to continue to work and continue to bounce back. And to me, that's just that's what a veteran player does. You know in your heart of hearts that it's going to get better. You got to keep putting in the work and the results will be there. Jim Hayes is joining us for the broadcast today. He'll have more on Nolan Arenado shortly as he awaits a 2 2 first inning pitch. No score. And again, a slingshot throw to first. Boy, it'd be really nice to knock this guy out of the game early. The Yankees are planning to use a bullpen game for the doubleheader nightcap. Matthew Libertor is going to pitch for the Cardinals. And then it's Montgomery and Cole tomorrow to wrap up the homestand. The 2 2. So a couple of long at bats here. Goldschmidt's on nine pitches. Arenado's seen a good number. And he'll battle again here with an even count. Well, Nolan Arnauto doing what Goldie did, making him work right here. You can see that Severino's really trying to stay away from him. We also know this with Nolan Arnauto, he can cover that pitch away, but one of those four seam leaks back over the plate, or he tries to throw one of those breaking balls, got a chance to go a long way. So, a chance for some first inning fireworks before the 4th of July. 
As Arenado stays alive, he'll see a seventh pitch. To your point about pitching him away, in recent times, Arenado's been hitting the ball with authority the other way, something that doesn't often happen for him. No, not generally. I mean, you look at his spray charts, pretty incredible. What else is incredible is he hit his first ever opposite field home run as a member of the Cardinals this year. His power is to the pull side, but you're right. He's letting the ball travel a little bit more and doing a better job of taking what the pitcher gives him. High fly ball curling toward right center. McKinney and Kiner Falefa converge. It'll be Kiner Falefa or IKF, as we'll call on the rest of this game. No score as we go to the second. Voted by fans as starting third baseman for the National League. He told me this one is special. He said this one feels different. Kind of feels like the first one because I got off to such a bad start. That start was one of the toughest of my career to be able to go through it and come out the other end as an all star. It's a pretty cool feeling. Chip Nolan missed last year's game with that back issue. He plans on playing this time. Had a baby. Love it. He's a gamer and he'll be headed to Seattle representing the Cardinals. As Anthony Rizzo. Leads off for the Yankees. There's Aaron Judge. He's in town, but unable to play. He's got a torn ligament in his toe. No timetable, Brad, for his return. Yeah, certainly disappointing for the Yankee fans, and, and honestly, disappointing for baseball fans to not get a chance to see that guy. We know from a competitive standpoint, it's a lot easier to face the Yankees without Aaron Judge up there taking his at bats. I wanted to see him. I want to see one of the best in baseball out there on the field. So, wishing him a speedy recovery. But as you pointed out for the Yankees they're scoring a run less per game without one man Aaron Judge. Yeah well it's uh, he's a lot bigger than one man when Correct. It, what he does uh, what, what he does yeah, no no question right and the, you know the crazy thing is with the Yankees right now as they come into this one they're nine games over 500 yet they're still 10 games back they play in the best division in baseball so there is little breathing room for them. And so when you couple the pitching problems that they have had because of injury and now you have Aaron Judge out the numbers tell the story he's missed 21 games and from an offensive standpoint the Yankees and Aaron Boone's club have gone from one of the best offenses Brad in baseball to one of the worst in 21 games. Well, I think that that's where it ends up being able to lean on balance right if you could do that but you're right without judge those 21 games they get the fewest hits in baseball they got the lowest on base percentage in baseball they are not the same ball club but nobody in the East is going to feel bad for nope. the Yankees right just like nobody in the NL Central which is not quite the juggernaut that the AL East is feels bad for the birds Rizzo rolls over and is taken care of Jack Flaherty has a ground ball out the first of those in the game and Isaiah Kiner Falefa is coming up. Suit up the season at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic caps, t-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your Cardinals at MLBShop.com. I thought you told me you weren't going to do long form. You anymore. told me I have to say it long form the rest of the game. I told you you have to write everything long. Form. Oh, no cheating. Pop fly foul out of play. Yeah, it's a lot easier to write I K F. Well. That could get messed up too. That's a very, very yeah. dangerous proposition. Sure is. That backed up and missed. One ball, one strike. Small, dead caught. What a play. Corman, right place, right time. And that ball carried him into center. Location 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 and Gorman was in a very good one slider hung up more than Jack Flaherty wanted but Gorman right there to snag that liner hard hit off the bat of IKF but he's there for it wait whoa whoa, whoa. way easier to do it that way I don't know why you go with the full name <sighs> different rules for different folks that's just not right here's Billy McKinney or B Mac as you could write in your score back if you want. <laughs> He's hitting 276, four homers, seven RBIs. He's seen Flaherty before and has a hit against him. Right there, a strike evens it up. 
We'll keep you posted on the Reds today. They're hosting San Diego. That one's tied one apiece. In the fourth inning at the Great American Ballpark. Yeah, the Reds have been out there. You mentioned the record. They're rattling off wins. A, a lot of come from behind victories. They're playing with an energy and they're playing with the confidence. And that's something that the Cardinals are still looking to build that, that confidence of rattling together wins. Take that all day. Good slider back door right there for Jack Flaherty to even up the count. He's been looking better. A couple of good defensive plays behind him as well. Yeah, no trouble in the first inning. Got a double play. He's got the first two outs here in the second. And a swing and a tip miss. That takes care of the Yankees. Flaherty's second strikeout. Jordan Walker goes to work for the Cardinals in a scoreless game. In time, Brad, for our Burger Kings Rule the Plate feature. Oh, I'm liking this right here. Jordan Walker hits the ball hard, does so consistently, and hitting the ball harder than Soto, Trout, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Does that mean he's going to be better than all those guys? Of course it does. No, we're not telling you a whopper, if you will. Nice one. Walker, since his recall, 24 hits. At a 338 average, and he's walking more, Brad. More selective. Ten walks in that stretch. This one bounced towards short. Volpe's got it, and a quick release. That was electric. One out. So Severino, a man that's really been banged up by injury, facing the Cardinals here today. Missed the first 48 games of this season with a lat strain. It's the maddening thing about pitchers of his caliber, same with Jack Flaherty. They're so good, you want them out there. And when they're not, it's a real shame for them and for their teams. For sure. And it also takes a little bit of time, Chip, to build back up, right? You, you get back, you miss all that time with the lat. He missed a lot of time with the lat injury last year. 59 games he missed with that also. Then missed the season with Tommy John. It's hard to build that consistency. That's rolled to LeMayhew at first. Easy play, takes care of Alec Burleson. And so for Severino, our AT&T fiber fast pitch, look at how much time this man has missed. Yeah, it's a, if you're trying to think of it in a positive frame, you look at it and say, look, he's got a lot of bullets left in him. You know, he is an impending free agent. I would have to assume that there are going to be a lot of teams that are very interested in the arm of Luis Severino. He'll have plenty of suitors. Be interesting to see how he finishes this year. He's got a chance to make himself a lot of money this year as a free agent. Paul DeYoung with two outs in the Cardinals second. Didn't get that. Well, look, for the Yankees, getting to the playoffs is job number one. Winning the division obviously is on their to do list. As this one's cracked down the line and headed for the seats foul. For New York, it's one simple task in simple, obviously in quotes. They got to find a way to beat Houston. That's been their yeah. playoff bugaboo. They haven't been able to get by them. That man has led the Yankees to the playoffs in five straight years. But they haven't gotten to the big dance or won it in a while. As this one's rolled slowly toward Glaber Torres, he's got it. And some soft contact saves Severino, an eight pitch second inning. And we head to the third scoreless. Five thousand fans, 16 and up, take home one of three mystery Henleys, thanks to Bear. And 10,000 kids, 15 and younger, entering with a ticket, take home a Cardinals all over print hat with elements designed by Emily Stahl. Tickets available at cardinals.com slash promotions. Here's Anthony Volpe. Big swing and pop fly foul back toward us. The Yankees have brought out their heavy hitters. Babe Ruth. I mean, Stogie and all? If you're going to do it, do it. That's dedication to the craft. Phil Melcher needs to kick that guy out. There's no smoking on the concourse. I don't think he's smoking it. Just kind of hanging out, just like a gentleman. Oh, he might be smoking that thing. Or, well, first the 0 2 pitch. Hey, swing and a miss. Flaherty's got three strikeouts. Good start to the third inning. There was a great PA man in Philadelphia named Dave Zinkoff. And he had a very distinctive nasally voice like that. And he would do the pregame announcements inside the uh, arena. And the last one was, there is no smoking in the spectrum. If you must smoke, please 
do not exhale. <laughs> that worked out well. Here's Oswaldo Cabrera. In a scoreless game, Jack's looking good today. And up and away, one ball, no strikes. Well, what I've liked with Jack so far, too, is his ability to make adjustments quickly. And it'll be nice to see this next pitch. You saw Jack, he was frustrated. That one ran off arm side. Does he get on top of this one? It's been his go-to right there. It falls behind. He's got that nice slider that he can use back door to some of these lefties. And how nice is it, Brad? 35 pitches with one out in the third inning for Flaherty. We hit broken bat. Burleson will flip to the pitcher covering perfect feed and he's faced the minimum through two and two thirds. Well that was just touch right there. He went with the slider back door to get back into the count and then spotted his 93 mile an hour fastball right there in on the hands of Cabrera shatter his bat. Brad Thompson's personal box is occupied in full today on a beautiful St. Louis day a little further up there but yes now the good seats very good seats. <laughs> Higashioka is the Yankees catcher he's got 19 ribbies the pitch and a shot over third on the first pitch that's the second Yankees hit. Your Chevy pitch tracks the slider from Jack Flaherty. Higashioka does a really good job staying back. You see him recognize the pitch, jumps on it. Not a terrible one. 86 down and away, but stayed on it. So back to the top in LeMayhew. He singled softly through the hole on the right side his first time up. This guy's always been a good hitter. You win two batting titles, one on each league. That is rather obvious. But he's not a guy, Brad, that just feasted in his days in Colorado. He's hit wherever he's played. Oh, you're right. And a, a, a guy that drives the ball to all fields. Got a good idea of what pitchers are trying to do to him. Can handle pretty much all quadrants of the plate. Oh, that was close. But a touch low, two balls, no strikes. Well, you, you don't want to fall behind 2 0, right, to anybody. But I'm loving the misses right now for Jack. I mean, those are two very narrow ones. Command looks a lot better early than it did last time out against the Nationals. Perfect pitch. Two balls, one strike. He's lived up there. He's gotten good work out of that 94, 93 mile an hour fastball, and now he's got a full count with Bowers on deck. I ah, lost him, overcooked it, and the inning continues. Bowers will bat with two aboard and two outs. So as Flaherty labors on here in the third inning, we step aside for a word from Academy Sports. Hey, St. Louis fans. Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to offer all military and first responders a 10% discount now through July 4th. We appreciate your service. Kisner out to give Jack a bit of a breather here. First time the Yankees have had a runner at second base and the first chance for the St. Louis fans to boo the New Yorkers who are starting to say let's go Yankees. Well good first uh, it's early but it's still nice to have a little bit of that and I think this is a good time to go out and talk to him. You know how much every single of these runs are going to cost the Cardinals. Offense has been at a premium. You want to make sure you get out of this one. Jake Bowers last time up Jack fell behind him a couple of sliders got back into a punch him out with a fastball up. Two on two outs. Good. 
pitch to start the sequence. Nothing in one for Jake Bowers, who lifts that one softly toward left. Walker, glasses gleaming at the edge of the track, calls it in. And that'll take care of New York in a scoreless third. Good ball game here in St. Louis. Had their long tradition of year-to-year -year success. Two very long seasons of winning records in play this year. Being a consistent organization is very difficult to do. You have to draft well. You have to develop well. You have to go out there and spend wisely. You have to have great leadership. And these three organizations, you see with the active winning streak, they have all of those things. Cardinals right now find themselves at risk of dropping off after those 15 consecutive winning years. That's why You'd love to see them build a little bit of momentum, but it has been fun to watch over the years, all three of those organizations. Tommy Edmond leads off the third for the Cardinals. The Redbirds have one base runner. That was a Paul Goldschmidt first inning walk. Severino has retired five straight. Edmond a switch hitter, batting left-handed against the right-hand pitching Severino. And he smokes one toward left center. That's down for a base hit. So he picked the right side of the plate. That breaks up the no hitter. And a good start for the Cardinals in the third with a speedy base runner aboard. Yeah, I really think this is the pitch that the Cardinals hitter is going to have to be ready to jump on. Can't miss any of these fastballs. Your Chevy pitch track gets 96, but it's middle up in the zone. That's good hitting for the Cardinals. Andrew Kisner likes to get work done early in the count. Let's see if he can guide a ball the other way for the Cardinals. He starts play at 210 at the plate. And Miss Lowe, one ball, no strikes. Edmonds, 14 out of 15 in stolen base tries. With this guy throwing 97, it might be tough to try to steal on him. We'll see how the Cardinals play it. He's got a good lead. Not going and fouled off the catcher. Even count. Well, he throws 97 and he's also very quick to the plate right there. It was the long look at Tommy Edmond, then 1 1 3 to the plate. Gonna be difficult there. We're told opposing base stealers are a perfect 4 for 4 against the Yankees right hander. Let's see what the Cardinals do here with nobody out and the top of the order lurking. Edmund bends at the waist. And is chased back. The Yankees think he's going to go. That ability as a pitcher to just hold the baseball is one of the best ones. I mean, that's the one that gets that runner there. All you got to do is just stop that momentum a little bit, but it's easier said than done. You think just standing on the mound holding the ball would be an easy thing to do, but you're used to falling into like a little bit of a, a routine there. Severino doing a good job. And as you know, with the pitch clock, you can't wait too long, right? You only get two disengagements or you violate the pitch clock. It costs you a ball in the count. So Kisner's ahead here, two balls and a strike. Not going is the runner and a check swing foul back. Cardinals are trying to make this guy get the ball down. Gorman struck out on a pitch up and out of the zone. That check swing costs Kiz a strike. And yeah, that one right there is one. You want to be able to lay off, obviously. Good hitting count. Now he's going to have to protect. We've seen Severino make some really nice pitches with his slider away also. A little looper into center. That's down for a hit. Edmund at second will stop. And the Cardinals have their first threat. First and second. Nobody out on back-to-back -back singles. Well, that was that cutter right there. Cutter down and away and a good one off the plate for Andrew Kisner. But with two strikes, really protects. Let's it travel. Gets it right off the end of the bat and figures out a way to find some green grass out in the outfield.
So the top of the order greets Severino here. Lars Nootbaar rolled out to third his first time up. Got to advance the runners here at the very least. With Goldschmidt and Gorman to follow here in the home third scoreless game. Half hearted butt attempt. It was center cut and he missed it. Strike one. Cardinals are four for 16 with runners in scoring position on the homestand. This is their first chance today. And that's driven down the line, long way into the corner. Still going. That ball is going to be caught. Great grab by Bowers. He came out of nowhere and at the last moment made a great basket catch for the out. Jim, I didn't think Jake Bowers had any chance at all getting to this baseball, especially after the initial jump. It looked like it took him a second to get on it, but some big time closing speed right here from Bowers. It hangs up in the air just long enough. Severino likes it and why not that is a big lift for the Yankees right hander he gets the out the runners can't advance and now he's looking for a double play ball off the bat of Paul Goldschmidt Goldie walked his first time up Back to back singles and a fly out in the St. Louis third. Driven toward right. McKinney going back. Still going back. That ball is gone. On line drive. Homer for Goldie and the Cardinals lead it 3 0. of hitting by Paul Goldschmidt they're going the other way and getting Bush Stadium into it that was a one iron I mean that was scorched that ball was down too. slider down under the zone and just stayed right on it so Goldie with a couple of homers on the homestand he got Christian Javier of the Astros he's gotten Severino here and St. Louis has given Jack Flaherty a three nothing lead Cardinals now with three players at 15 or more homers this year Arenado, Gorman and now Goldschmidt and they're all stacked up on the lineup card today. I think Severino's stunned too. When that ball left the bat and the way McKinney took his route, I think he was thinking it was going to hit off the top of the fence. Well, the, the thing is, too, with Goldie, such a good breaking ball hitter. So if you're going to end up throwing that pitch, even though it was down, you got to make sure it ends up being away. And Goldie on this one here from Severino, he gets the slider after he threw 97 by him. But look at him just stay down on this thing. And I, I love the way that you put it. That one iron just scorches it the other way. You see McKinney out there and right, right off the bat. He thought he had a beat on it. That thing just kept on traveling on this warm July day here in St. Louis. And so the Cardinals, as has been their custom, Brad, Flip of the coin as to how they score. It's home run or not a home run yeah, this year. I, I think that at times, like there, there's a bad moniker that comes with that percentage of runs hit via the long ball. But look at some of the teams that are on that list. Two, like, two of the best teams in the National League, in the Braves and in the Dodgers. You've got the Yankees that have tons of power, albeit without Aaron Judge right now, a little bit different. But that is a good thing to be able to drive the ball out of the ballpark. Now there are times where you want to be able to manufacture, get a guy on, get him in, uh, get him over, get him in. But I like having that ability. So it's three nothing Cardinals. Here's Arenado. He flied out his first time up. We could see Nolan in between innings. 
one and two really muttering it to himself as he took his defensive position. I'm guessing Brad he thought he had a pitch to do damage with and he just missed it. Yeah, I think you're right. He had one. It was 97. It was middle away but a pitch that you know he can drive ended up flying out on that one but looking for another fastball elevated. Slow roller left side. Bad throw. It sails into right field. So Cabrera makes a bad throw. No chance for Torres to hold the bag, and the Cardinals get a break. First and second, still one out. Well, you get the long ball, and then you'll take any help that you can get. Cabrera trying to make that throw on the run. His momentum continues carrying him towards first base. Unfortunately for him, that's exactly where the throw goes. That looked like a case of trying to do too much. Right? Trying to stop the bleeding, trying to make a heroic play when you just had to get the second out. So here's Walker. He rolled out his first time up. Chance for a big inning for St. Louis. Down and away, ball one. Well, Chip, you talked about it in his first at bat. Jordan Walker is doing a great job of recognizing pitches, that cutter, slider that Severino can throw down and away. He's been laying off those types. High pop fly right side. Long run McKinney still coming. Foul ground. He's going to make that play. Tagging at second is Gorman. He's going to make it. Arenado tries to tag. And they miss the tag on the cutoff. Both runners advance on a pop fly to right. Just heads up baseball right here. Arenado sees that Volpe's got that one on the cutoff. He evades that one. But you've got McKinney going after that ball down the line. You know, all of his momentum is heading towards the stands. Why not take the base? All of a sudden, you're an overcooked pitch away from another run. All kinds of action here in this third inning for the Cardinals. Alec Burleson, the eighth man to bat. And takes one in the dirt. Again, make this man pile up pitches. Get into a very good Yankee bullpen, but maybe make some of those guys unavailable for the nightcap. It's a 3 0 Cardinals lead on a Goldschmidt laser into the St. Louis bullpen. Alec didn't think so. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. That definitely didn't have to be, and it's a good approach right there. He's looking for one thing in that spot, too. Oh, he's looking for a fastball that's that's elevated. Ended up getting the slider, and fortunately for Severino, he got the call. So from two and zero oh to a two-two count. It's the difference in the big leagues, isn't it, Chip? Two zero. Oh. No there's no such thing as the fastball count slider gets the call another good slider evens up the count. The 25th pitch is lined in left field a base hit that'll score a run Burleson with a two strike two out knock it's four to nothing. What a pretty swing right here from Alec Burleson. He was in the driver's seat 2-0. The count evened up. He got himself a third breaking ball in a row, and he ends up just going the other way with it. Drops the head on 86 and drives in another run. Cardinals continue to apply the pressure here on Severino. So first and third for Paul DeYoung. Four runs, four hits in this Cardinals third inning. And another shot in the left field, a base hit for DeYoung. Arenado trots home. It's a five run third. Well, we've seen Paulie D in these spots wanting to be aggressive early, and he is on this pitch, and it's a good one. It's a cutter. It's a way. It's just off the plate, but it sneaks right past Volpe over there at shortstop and drives in another one. 
So we batted around here in the third inning. And the man that got it started was Tommy Edmund. He'll dig in again. It is hot in St. Louis, and that is just how we like it here at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals have erupted for five runs, and they're about to force a 60th pitch of the game from Luis Severino of the Yankees. Action has begun in the Yankees bullpen. Matt Crook is up and throwing. Crook was activated as their 27th man for this doubleheader day. And a big change from last inning. He was only an eight pitch second for Severino. And you bring up a good point with the doubleheader today. Rosters do expand by one extra player per team. And with today's game being so specialized when it comes to pitchers both clubs Brad have added a hurler for the doubleheader today. Uh, you got to make sure you're protected somebody that can give you some innings the Cardinals have brought in Dakota Hudson as their guy. Two one and a swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. On a hot, humid day in St. Louis, Severino has labored through a 30-pitch third inning. Two on, two out. The pitch. Line to short, and Volpe is there, and that'll retire the side. A great inning for the Cardinals. Paul Goldschmidt with an opposite field three run homer got the parade started, and the Cardinals lead by five. RBI singles as well. Alec Burleson and Paul DeYoung. Cardinals with a five run third. Now head to the fourth. Jack Flaherty looking good, Brad. He's got a five run cushion now. Well, and this is exactly where you want to see Jack Flaherty be aggressive. Go right after him, right? This is shutdown inning. He's been efficient so far. It's been 15 pitches per inning. Gets the call right there, top of the zone. We'll see him attack right here, the heart of the order of the Yankees. Glaber Torres hitting to a double play his first time up. Great diving catch. In center for Tommy Edmond. DJ Mayhew was running with a full count pitch, and once the catch was made, he was all the way to third base. It was an easy inning ending throw to first. Nice tight, tight slider right there from Flaherty. It is amazing, too, with Tommy Edmond in center field, how much he has solidified things defensively for this ball club. I mean, we've seen him make some plays out there and just change some innings that could have gotten away from the Redbirds. Come on now. Kids thought that was strike three. It appeared to be. Well, that's because he's in this ballpark. There's only one guy that missed it. Unfortunately, he's the one that counts behind the plate in Lance Barksdale. Woof. 2 2. And a chopper to short. That is that. Justice is served as Torres is retired. And there is out number one. Different look on the Cardinal infield today. For more on that, here's Jim Hayes. Yeah, Brendan Donovan, a late scratch yesterday because of soreness in his throwing arm. He got checked out by team doctors yesterday. According to Ali Marmel, the report was positive. Ali said no IL stint. He can still take at bats and DH, but no throwing for a couple of days as we let it calm down a little bit. Chip Donovan had been on fire at the plate, so they're glad he's okay. As Anthony Rizzo takes a strike and now it's his turn to grumble as Jack Flaherty gets ahead of him 0 and 1. What well, is very good news with Donovan you know how instrumental he is to what the Cardinals are trying to do. Hopefully a couple of days of rest gets that arm back to where he needs to be. So nice to have a versatile player like that you can put anywhere on the diamond. We've talked a lot about that with Tommy Edmund but I feel like Tommy is really solidified. The mix quickly. 
Rizzo takes high two balls at a strike. A lot of head to head history with Flaherty and Rizzo as you'd expect when Anthony was with the Cubs. He's nine for 20 head to head with three career homers. Hard to believe this is Rizzo's second full season in the Bronx after all those years in Chicago. He's had a terrific career. I thought it was very smart too for the Yankees to end up signing him back. I mean their big ticket item obviously was Aaron Judge on the nine year deal bring back Rizzo on a two year deal. And he takes ball four. Rizzo's aboard with Flaherty's second walk of the game. And IKF is coming up. He lined out hard to second. Getting lazy on that name Chip. This week on Cardinals <laughs> Insider Adam Wainwright. Welcomes a special group to the ballpark and Tommy Edman relives his best moments as a Cardinal. That's Cardinals Insider tomorrow at noon on Valley Sports Midwest. Five nothing St. Louis all five runs came in the home third. Jack's had a lead like this before. Last time he had a five run lead or better was June 2nd against the Pirates. He led 5 1 in that game, and that was one of the agonizing losses for the Cardinals. Pittsburgh came back and won that one 7 5. Don't want a repeat of that today. This time at home, the pitch is low. Two balls at a strike. It's not bringing up old stuff, Chip. That's in the past. We're going, we're going future now. I like it. Well, we're halfway through. This is game 81, if you can believe that. 81 more games left. After today, ground ball two third. Vacuumed up for one and two good strong throws. Earns Flaherty another double play. That erases a Yankees threat. Shut down frame. It's five nothing birds. And that night, 25,000 fans, 16 and up, take home a Cardinals soccer jersey presented by Purina. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Fun day so far in St. Louis. The Cardinals with a five-run third. And the first pitch whacked up the middle by Kisner. Nice play at second by Glaber Torres. That was slick. And Andrews robbed of a hit, one out. Here in the home fourth. Yeah, Torres made this one look easy, gets to it quickly, knows he's got a little bit of time here with Kisner running, so he can take an extra step. A pretty good play right there by Torres. That release reminded me of Robinson Cano. Remember how great a player he was? As Lars Newtbar is the batter, he's 0 for 2, robbed of a hit his last time up. Great play by Bowers in left to take away a double from him. For new bar. Big turnaround first. He's going for two. McKinney's throw is going to be late. He got in a hustle double. You're going to love everything about this for Lars Newbar. First, the changeup that hangs up and he stays back, and then he is hustling out of the box. He sees the play develop. He knows that he can get there. I mean, this is close right here. Good throw. But just beats it. There's a bird's eye view. Great camera work. And a good result for Paul Goldschmidt. A three run homer and a walk today. 15 homers, 45 knocked in for Paul now. Paul Goldschmidt is today's Kia player profile. Well, Paul Goldschmidt, as we all know, one of the best in the game, hits the ball extremely hard. How hard? Well, the highest hard hit percentages in baseball, fourth highest, and a pretty good list right there that Goldie finds himself on. 
And not surprised to see this with Luis Severino this third time here facing Goldie attacking more with the fastball. It was the slider that he drove the other way somehow picked it up almost off the dirt and drove it out to right. That's the other perplexing thing about how this season has gone for the Cardinals. As he chased a high fastball and didn't get it. Cardinals are second to the Braves in hard hit percentage right you hit the ball hard generally speaking you're supposed to have offensive success it has been there at times for St. Louis Brad but at times it just hasn't clicked. Yeah and, and in total fairness I don't think that the Cardinals offense has been their problem or at least their biggest problem the, the pitching is, is going to have to solidify itself if this team is going to do anything but you're right that the goal is oh, oh. crushed down the line no doubter and just shy of the second deck. That was hard hit. Yeah, I think that we were talking about consistently hitting a baseball hard. Well, so rudely interrupted with a monster home run off the bat of Nolan Gorman. Got every bit of this one. 95 up and in. Pulls the hands to it and go ahead and walk it for a minute. Go ahead and give that one a look. Beautiful. His last homer June 9th against the Reds. First homer in 12 games. And the Cardinals are pulling away. It is seven nothing. It's only the fourth inning. Well, the key to the game today was bring the thunder. We know that the Cardinals hit a lot of home runs. Severino has given up some as well. So you look at how they're scoring the three run bomb, the two run bomb, getting it done. Arenado trying to yank one out to left and pops that up. Love seeing how aggressive Gorman is too. That's his sixth home run this season on the first pitch. You see something you like, you let it fly. And Severino's woes away from Yankee Stadium have continued in a big way today. Seven runs, seven hits. And that one's going to get to the gap. Arenado on his way to second. He'll cruise in with a two out double. Chip you mentioned this earlier with Arenado the ability to go the other way and how he's been hitting the ball that way with authority. This is a change up. It's down and away. It's off the plate. I mean this is a good pitch. He goes down and gets it and just ends up burning McKinney who's playing in catches him in the gap. So the eighth Cardinal hit as Arenado at second. Half of the Cardinals hits have been extra base hits two of them homers one by Goldschmidt one by Nolan Gorman and it's a seven nothing lead. Another chance for McKinney and Wright. He'll reach up and make the play at 375. That guy's going to need the cold tub. He's been running pillar to post. The Cardinals enjoy a huge lead early. His 16th of the year has him on the cusp of 50 RBIs. And that's helped the Cardinals to a 7-0 lead. How often do you see it, Brad? A guy that runs a virtual marathon in the outfield has to lead off the next half inning. That happens all the time, doesn't it? The old adage. Billy McKinney is that man. He struck out his first time up. Yankees have just two hits. Flaherty has looked very good. He has struck out three, walked two. He's gotten two double plays. And to your point, with a lead like this, attack, attack, attack. Yeah, no mercy. Fill it up, right? Just keep going. It doesn't mean you can just lay it right down the middle. You still have to execute pitches. This team, they can get back in there quickly. But you are in the driver's seat right now. And that one hit toward Arenado, who is positioned perfectly. One out. Anthony Volpe is coming up after a quick word from Great Southern Bank. Find an account that fits you with affordable options, trusted guidance, and personalized support along the way. 
Get started at GreatSouthernBank.com. Volpe has three straight multi-hit games for the Yankees, but is 0 for 1 today. And drives that one out of play foul. They have been high on this kid for a long, long time. They think he will be Derek Jeter-like, if we dare say that, in the early days of his big league career. I mean, that is a pretty big comp to throw out there, but you're right, they love him, right? And they also know that he's going to have to learn at this level. You've seen some good things. You've also seen him go through spurts of a lot of swing and miss. You've seen that chase rate be there a little bit for Volpe at this point, but a very, very talented young player. Buckled him with that pitch. That was nice. Jack just missed there. It's low and away. Two balls, two strikes. Volpe's a Jersey kid. First round pick in 2019. He was a Yankees fan as a kid. As this one scorched towards center, but right up the elevator shaft. And an easy play for Edmund, who's got that. And two men are out for Oswaldo Cabrera. He rolled out to first in the Yankees third. Well you look at these Yankees and all the numbers on their backs you see these numbers more in spring training than you do during regular season play you've got judge wearing ninety nine this guy's wearing number ninety five. Well there's a reason for that. The New York Yankees have retired numbers one through ten. 15 16 37 42 44 46 49 and 51 there's a tiny bit of history there chip yeah just a little bit they'll end up retiring 99 that will likely go down at some point yep and they've run out of numbers so quickly they had to retire eight twice <laughs> and there are the Cardinals retired numbers Someday Brad Thompson's number might join that illustrious group. It just depends who wears it. <laughs> well done. Two balls, two strikes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but the Yankees retired number eight twice. Yogi Berra and Bill Dickey wore number eight in New York. And a shot over first as Waldo Cabrera has a two out hit nicely played by Newt Bar to hold him to a single. And Higashioka is coming up. He had the second Yankees hit back in inning number three. Well, this pitch ends up jamming him but the key is you see where Kisner set up you see where the pitch ended up Andrew Kisner wanted that thing down and away it was just a miss up and in so again just comes back to the adjustment right how quickly can Jack Flaherty get right back to where he wanted to be when it comes to his location. Agashioka didn't get it he's down a strike. Again, it's so strange seeing this Yankees club with three players in their lineup in double digits yeah. and homers. But they aren't themselves yet. And waiting for the return of Aaron Judge. However, I would assume, Brad, that's that's a mixed blessing because if they expect Aaron Judge to do it all by himself, that's a, a trap door waiting to open. No, you're right. They they need to continue to, to get production top and bottom. They're need to gonna need to be able to pitch. We talked about it a little bit earlier their bullpen has been very good they've leaned on that group it's going to be a whole team effort to get back into things in a very tough east and I would imagine the Yankees will be buyers at the deadline what they buy remains to be seen believe it or not it might have to be offense for a more balanced attack in New York the pitch and they've got to get their starters healthy they've got to get those guys back obviously they start play today 10 games out of first place they're in third in the AL East. 
but the Yankees would be the second wild card if postseason play were to start today. The 2 2 pitch is low. The Cardinals also 10 games out in our division and getting some help today. The Reds are losing to San Diego. That's a 5 1 game in the seventh inning. Chance to pick up a game perhaps today. And that's or gonna, more. Yeah, that's going to be the process, right? It's just chip away. Cardinals start, as you mentioned, 10 games back. They're five games back of fourth place right now. I mean, they got a lot of work to do. Squibber back to the mound. Jack, nice play. And the flip to first is in time to retire the side. We're halfway home in game one. We're at the halfway mark of the 2023 championship season. And the Cardinals lead 7 zip. Woman Goldie and Arenado don't miss DC Superhero Night at Bush Stadium Wednesday August 2nd fans who buy a special theme ticket get an exclusive DC Cardinals Batman bobblehead get your tickets at Cardinals.com slash theme I remember hearing you and Alexa talk about this promo on the Cardinals live pregame show they said that you and I were Batman and Robin yeah yeah and uh, quite specifically she she did give you the Batman moniker. I don't know how I feel about it. There'll be a couple of Batmans, you know, there could be more than one. Not that Robin didn't do a good job. I'm just what well, do you feel like an understudy or something? It feels like a, I don't know how to feel about it to be honest. Maybe it's just the, the whole outfit. Didn't love it. Base hit down the line for Burleson. He turned and burned on that baby. He's chugging to second. McKinney's throw is going to be off target. Might have hit him in the foot on the way by. And Burleson with a hustle double starts the Cardinals fifth. He's Batman today. He's got a couple of knocks. Continuing to pile on, continuing to put that pressure on Luis Severino, and continuing to hit some pretty good pitches. This one, the changeup here. He wants it down and away, though. The mistake was in. And Burleson able to pull it right past LeMahieu down the line. Cardinals had four hits on the homestand with runners in scoring position entering today's play. They have four such hits today and enjoy a 7 0 lead. DeYoung with an RBI hit that came in the five run third for the Cardinals and had a good rip at that. The Yankees bullpen busy again as Severino's been hit and hit hard away from home. Yet again today. Uh, we showed you the graphic earlier. A 7.85 ERA away from home. And boy, that thing has gone up in this one. And credit the Cardinals have had a good approach against him. It hasn't all been mistakes from Luis Severino. They've hit some tough pitches with two strikes and then taken advantage of some pitches up. That's exactly what Gorman did. Gorman saw the first one he liked and gave it a charge. One ball, two strikes. Well, the, the batted ball that I think took Severino right out of his game was the ball that Goldie hit. That was a really good pitch. Yeah, that's one where it comes out of your hand. You say, yes. Okay, what? What do you mean? And right. then it's a three-run bomb. Your back's against the wall. Then you try to make even tougher pitches. So he may not be long for this game if he struggles. If you're seeing the horizontal move, right? I don't know how you could call it. Strike three. Nice frame by Smith there. The Yankees will use one, two, three inning for Bickford. Five three Kansas City Daniel Lynch still on the mound and his first pitch is lifted to right field Blanco is over to make the catch and that will help the young man 26 year old Lynch trying to stick through the fifth inning the MLB app is your place for live baseball real time highlights and pitch by pitch updates faster than ever get personalized highlight reels based on players you follow every day download the MLB app today. Well, if you're checking the MLB app for other games, 
regionally on Fox tonight. You may know that the Guardians and Cubs have started their baseball game. They're in the top of the second inning in Chicago. And Guardians fans don't need to hear anything about a rain delay with the Cubs because the last one didn't go so hot back in 2016. That wasn't the Guardians. That's true. That was that other. It was team. the other team in Cleveland. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great. That's a great point. Two strikes on J.D. Martinez, who smoked the ball in the first. Here he's behind, and he swings through a high fastball. Daniel Lynch has really settled down, retired the last six hitters that he's faced. Here he challenges J.D. Martinez. He expands out of the zone. Again, Lynch had that tough sick, the second inning, but really done a nice job of settling down and starting to attack the Dodger hitters. Was able to get what looks to be through five innings. You're not always going to have your great stuff. Things aren't always going to go your way, but you've got to compete. And he's doing a great job of that tonight. This one gets by Garcia at third. He was a little bit flat footed. And so Vargas into second base, and we'll see if that does end the night for Lynch. Will he get one more batter? Vargas just off the end of the bat right there. You mentioned it, Jason. He didn't move his feet. You know, he, he should have moved them. He's gone back a little bit to get a better hop. So back to back games with an error over at third for Michael Garcia, who was. Drew Kisner said, why waste any time? He, first thing he sees, it's a sinker down under the zone, drops the bat to it, and drives it right down the line to bring in a pair. This is more like it. This is what this Cardinal offense can do. I'm not saying you're scoring 10 runs a game, but they can be dangerous all the way through their lineup. That one all the way to the backstop. And Kisner moves up. Well, that was funky right there by Crook. Ended up just pulling that one. Ten runs on 11 hits. This is a lot more fun than the last game we saw against Houston. I don't even remember that game, Chip. Don't remember it. This is far more fun. <sighs> Two balls, no strikes. Gashioka's position is called a catcher. He's having trouble doing that here. No, just gonna have to get that little guy out of his mitt. Keeps knocking everything out. Oh, Gashioka very solid behind the plate. You wonder how much these two have worked together, honestly. I was wondering that myself. Made his major league debut June 16th at Boston. It was an unforgettable one. He gave up a grand slam in that game, and he has yet to retire a batter here in the Cardinal fifth and that's what you kind of expect from young guys in his spot he was again taken in the rule five in the minor league phase of that and here he is pitching in the big leagues for the Yankees yeah well and there, there's a reason you know you, you get your name called you were the hot hand of the time you get an opportunity here you're fresh you're able to eat up some innings and that's what they're going to want from him is to settle in a little bit but boy ain't getting any easier for him with Paul Goldschmidt the reigning MVP up to bat.
That one found the mark for Paul Goldschmidt, who got the scoring parade started in the third with a three run bomb into the St. Louis bullpen. Uh, Goldie might end up trading bullpens on his home runs if he gets one of those breaking balls that comes in into him leave that thing middle in. You know over his career the dominance he has had against left handed pitching. Driven toward right center. Awkward route but the catch is made by IKF tagging and scoring is Kisner and the Cardinals have scored 11 Goldschmidt with a four RBI day today he adds with a sacrifice fly we've seen a bunch of the long ball we've seen timely hitting and now we're seeing just a productive out there by Goldie again the idea of just continuing to put together very good at bats. So Severino allowed nine runs in his four innings only seven of those nine were earned. And now Crook has joined the fray. He's allowed two runs and has one man out. Gorman, a two run homer, his last time up. Told you he got off to a quick start in June, but then cooled quickly. His first homer today since June the 9th. Yankees don't think Newt Bar is going anywhere with an 11 run lead. And that's way outside. Most runs Severino's allowed in a game is 10. He allowed nine in this game. There's a strike. It's two and two. Again, I know it's not fashionable to say there are 81 games left. I think it's very fashionable to say, Chip. Same with this. And Gorman doesn't get the sweeper, and he's the second out. I think to, to, to that point, right, same way the Cardinals dug themselves a very big hole in the first half of the season, have an opportunity to dig out of it in the second half. Got to play more consistent baseball, top to bottom. There's no question. I do believe that this offense is going to be one of the biggest keys. You're going to have to win some slugfest. Pitching's going to have to solidify, but there is time. But the interesting part is there's that little man again. The interesting part is going to be what happens in the next four weeks before the trade deadline because that's when teams are really tweaking and, and making those changes to get themselves over the hump. So Newbar advances on what was scored a passed ball. Arenado with an RBI chance as we approach three o'clock in St. Louis. 11 nothing Cardinals. And roll foul. Something else you have to think about too. You look, you get this thing whittled down to four or five games by the trading deadline. With the new schedule, we don't see our divisional opponents in the middle months of the season. That all changes when you get to September. The Cardinals will have six games head to head with the Reds, who lead the division, including the final three games of regular season play are here at Bush against the Reds. Yeah. Sure, you'd love to get all 10 games back before the deadline. That would be perfect. It's possible, not likely. But if you can just stay relevant until you get into divisional play, then anything can happen. Now the Cardinals today try to take a step toward that goal with a big lead. And right now, Vigashioka behind the plate is riding a bucking Bronco. Oh, yeah, there is a lot going on there. Crook right here is trying to figure out somehow, some way to get through this, cross firing a bunch. Higashioka, who has not seen him a ton. Just trying to corral some things back there. That was a good choice on a hitter's count pitch. Full count. Well, the ball's moving like crazy from Crook. He's not putting it where he wants to, but the movement profile is a good one. Jordan Walker is the only Cardinal without a hit today. He'd like to change that. Here in the home fifth, three balls, two strikes. And that one was fouled at the plate. Mm. 
Walker, of course, will try to extend a career high 17 game hitting streak today. The three two. I don't think he liked that pitch. Well, sometimes you got to talk to yourself out there, Chip. So here's Walker. I right, kid, get into the hit parade. Every Cardinal has one. And looks like we'll have a pinch runner at first. Arenado is going to be taken down. Dylan Carlson will pinch run in an 11 run game with another game to follow and his back problems of late. Good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Get him off his feet, potentially get some, some treatment, or just let him relax out there. A nice day for Nolan, and you know, hopefully, got plenty of time here for a nice day for Dylan Carlson as well. 11 runs on 11 hits for the Cardinals. And Walker, the ninth man to hit in the inning. Second time today, the Cardinals have batted around against the Yankees. And a good pitch there, strike one. Yank foul, it's nothing in two. Another score we'll keep an eye on for you is Milwaukee and Pittsburgh. That game is delayed. Yes, it's Pittsburgh. Yes, it's July, which means what? Well, it's gonna rain. Bingo. That's how that works. No rain here in St. Louis today. The pitch is fouled back. And it was raining sideways here last night. We know that we have such a, a broad viewership base. Hope everybody is okay with the storms that ripped through the area last night. And it, it did get nasty after they called it here. Chopped off the plate. And Crook will flip to first. And that will retire the side. A couple of huge innings for the Cardinals. A five spot in the third. Four here in the fifth. And Aaron Boone needs a hug. Carlson who entered for Nolan Arenado takes over in right field. Jack Flaherty is still working for the Cardinals. He's through five shutout innings. Lars Newbar has moved to center. Tommy Evans moved from center to second. And Nolan Gorman has moved over to third. Boy these moves are a lot more fun when the Cardinals are on this side of things. LeMayhew, the Yankees leadoff man. He's reached base twice. They have just three hits. 11 runs on 11 hits for the Cardinals. Uh, the if big you're scoring at home or just watching the game. Well, you could do both, can't you? Multitask a little bit. Little pop behind first, curling toward the line, but that'll be in foul ground. One ball, two strikes. And with all the changes and with the, the lopsided lead for that guy right there, you're mentality is the same you go out there you keep attacking you keep going out as you take a look at some of the wholesale moves here for the Cardinals but Jack Flaherty needs to stay right where he's at he's made some solid adjustments from his last couple of outings on the ground is short no trouble there flip to first in plenty of time one out as we join the cat Jim Hayes Jeff, kind of a bummer we won't get to see Aaron Judge, who's on the I.L. with a toe issue. He is on the trip, and he was talking to his former teammate, Jordan Montgomery, before the game yesterday. Jordan starts Sunday, and he says Judge told him, I'm ducking you, Chip. <laughs> well, I can understand why he might say that. Montgomery's been the best Cardinal starter in recent days, and he'll pitch tomorrow. Good matchup. Garrett Cole for the Yankees. That should be a lot of fun. One of the best in the game. Strikeout machine having another monster year. I'm looking forward to watching Montgomery do his thing. Giancarlo Stanton. Try to stay cool. 
Garrett Cole in that shot as well. Who buys dinner? I mean, that's the question. Those three go out. Garrett Cole, Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge. The, the, the answer is probably the restaurant. I mean, <laughs> they just all tip right. well. Yeah, sure. Come on in, guys. One ball, two strikes for Jake Bowers. It's two and two. Well, it's amazing with all the money the Yankees spend and have spent in the last decade or so. It's been a long time since they've won a World Series. That's got a rank of ownership. And as I said earlier, they haven't been able in recent years to get past the Houston Astros. That's yeah, been tough. 2009, right? Last time that they have won a championship, and you know that they're dedicated to doing so. A great organization. They spend a lot, but you know what? It's a lot more than spending. And it is, to your point, sometimes just who you run into. And are you playing your best baseball at the biggest times? 2 2 is foul back. That's an excellent point. The Yankees have been outspent this year by the Mets. The Mets are in fourth place. The Yankees are in third place. The Dodgers with their giant payroll are two games behind the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Cubs with a big payroll fourth place five games out. Yeah I mean it's not to say that spending doesn't give you a chance. It certainly does. You're spending on good players. You still have to piece it together. Larry with a good off speed pitch has his fourth strikeout. He's got Everything at his command today. Yeah, fourth punch out, second punch out with the curveball in this one. Some of the better depth that we've seen. A little bit slower, too. 74 miles an hour on the bender. Another big payroll team, the Padres. Eight games under 500, Brad, and 11 and a half games out of first. I don't think anybody saw that no, coming out west. Definitely did not, especially with the full year of. Pretty much full year of Fernando Tatis Jr. That's why you got to play the games, right? That's it. That is exactly it. And can the Yankees catch Tampa Bay, who does it without a $200 million payroll year after year? Incredible to watch. It really is what they've done over there. Line into center for Glaber Torres. And he has a two out hit, the fourth of the game for New York. And Anthony Rizzo will be the batter. But Aaron Boone has been here before. Again, he's taken the Yankees to the postseason in his first five years, something that only Joe Torrey and Casey Stengel have done at the helm in the Bronx. Yeah, 10 games back, you're nine games over 500. It's not like you're playing awful baseball. Right. And uh, to the point that we showed earlier, a different ball club without Aaron Judge there. The hope is for them they get him back and are able to go on a run. As you mentioned, three starting pitchers on this shelf and spent big money on a six year deal for Carlos Rodon, has not thrown a pitch for them yet. Frankie Montas is on the shelf, as is Nestor Cortez. I'm told that uh, Radon is going to make his first start July 7th. And that Cortez is getting closer to coming back. So adding those two guys will certainly help the Yankees. Getting Judge back at some point obviously is going to help. I just wonder if their offense is diverse enough with Judge being out for an unknown amount of time, if that's going to be enough to allow the Yankees to stay in the wild card race if not the division race and if they do get in how far they'll go. Yeah it's going to be tough in the in the division you would think that the the idea would be at the very least just tread water right tread water plays decent baseball until he comes back and hope to go on a run. Yankees have Baltimore and the Cubs on their slate before the all star break so they'll go toe to toe with the club that's directly in front of them the second place Orioles. In the AL East. As Rizzo waits a 2 2 and grounds it to the left side. Little flip to second will take care of New York. Flaherty has been terrific. He's got 11 runs to play with and shutting out New York. Every home game, enjoy games, prizes, and free frozen treats while supplies last in the Ford Plaza. That's presented by. Prairie Farms. We'll cool off any way we can on a muggy day in St. Louis. 
The Cardinals are blasting New York, leading 11 to nothing. Bottom of the order has been awesome for the Cardinals today. Alec Burleson, part of that. Alec has a couple of hits. He scored a run. He's knocked in one. Every Cardinal batter has a hit today, except Jordan Walker, which we hope will change in the latter part of this game. But as they say, the baseball gods will tell you someone's got to make the outs in a game like this. Well, the Yankees hoping too that. Matt Crook can settle in and just give them some innings as you mentioned last inning chip I mean he's going to be looked at to potentially eat up some of this although there is a little action out there in that Yankees bullpen. Little flip out to shallow left Bowers is under it he's got that and that takes care of Alec Burleson in an 11 run game a decision for Oliver Marmol do you let Flaherty go back out there. Apparently the answer is no the answer is no they're hugging it out and a nice outing from Jack Flaherty we mentioned the last couple of outings had not gone Jack's way had given up 12 earned runs over his last 10 and two thirds love seeing that today. So James Nail plays catch he'll come on for the Cardinals and face the middle of the order in inning number seven. Isaiah Kiner Falefa, IKF, will lead off for New York. Chip, little known fact, well, very well known to you. That's actually how we sign off every winning broadcast is with the big hugs yeah. up here. The yeah. whole crew gets in on it. Yeah, it's we're a very close group. We really are. Paul Young's had a good day today. He scored a run, knocked in a run. And has one of the 11 St. Louis hits. And Higashioka, <laughs> he will need to hydrate between games. He's been a busy man back there. Yeah, not an easy job back there anyhow. Then on a day like this, your starter gets beat up. Crook comes in, a guy that he's likely not too familiar with. Has him jumping all over the place back there. He's the 27th man on the roster for the Yankees during the doubleheader. And that missed again. He's wild with his third walk. One on, one out in the St. Louis sixth inning. Let's join now a quick word from Tickets for Less. Tickets for Less for a better ticketing experience. Best seats, best prices, and no surprises at checkout. Chance for Tommy to hit right-handed again. And takes in the dirt, one ball, no strikes. All Cardinals in game one after a rain out last night. This game's been worth the wait. The rescheduled game follows at 615 tonight. What are we doing between games? We figured that out yet? Uh, probably a whole bunch of activities. Certainly. Certainly a lot of work, maybe a little workout. I know you're a big yoga guy. Yeah. At least that's what those pants say. Yoga pants and two year olds never lie, Brad. I'm on page 493 of the Yankees Media Guide. I've done my studious research for game two. I'm surprised you haven't finished it yet. Well, the series has started. There's a lot of action in the game today. Only got 35 or six more to go. As that's foul. Tell you all about. Leonardo Pastana if he somehow makes it to St. Louis for game two. Oh Leo I'll tell you what always been a fan. One ball two strikes. And that's up and away. Got a chance to catch up with Michael Kay. He's the longtime voice of the Yankees on TV. He's in town. Their broadcasters, Brad, are 
Pages 508 through 514. Oh, is that right? In the media guy, yeah. yeah. Guy. Kind of near the back, huh? I don't know. Back to the mound and another bad throw. And nobody held the bag at second. Man, it's been a comedy of errors for the Yankees infield in this game. Uh, the, these ones are so maddening when you have an opportunity to help yourself. Labor last inning. You have so much time right there to step and throw. I mean, that is the you see Crook just sidearm sling that thing. Take a step towards your target and hit him. That's going to be it for Crook. So he tried to eat up a few innings, but he had base runners all over the place. He didn't help himself with a throwing error. And the Cardinals will try to add on. It's 11 nothing. Sponsor of the St. Louis Cardinals and by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Everybody in St. Louis enjoying a cold Budweiser on a day like today. It's hot here in St. Louis, and so's the offense. Cardinals up 11 0 and continue to threaten here in the sixth inning. And with that in mind, Brad, the Yankees make another Chevy call to the bullpen. That's going to be Albert Abreu in for his 29th game of the season. Having a solid year here for the Yankees. Abreu turns 28 in September. They got him from Kansas City on a waiver claim. He was originally acquired by the Yankees in the trade that sent Brian McCann. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Brian McCann went to Houston. And so Abreu, free and easy 97. That'll play, won't it? You're going to get a lot of that from Abreu. It's just. Four seam love. He's got a sinker, two slider change up, but gonna lean on that quick arm action. And down on strikes goes Kisner on three pitches. One out for Abreu, two outs in the inning, and we go back to the top at Lars Newtbar. Newt's had a good day today. He's doubled, scored, and walked. Game two, weather permitting, follows us at 6.15. Matthew Libertor will go for the Cardinals. The Yankees will use whomever they don't use in game one to get through nine innings in the nightcap. Two of the all-time greats there, huh? Mickey Mantle, Stan Musial. thought that was Fred and Seth, actually. Two balls, no shot. We had Babe Ruth here earlier, too, right? Well, until he got kicked out of here for smoking. Yeah. Phil got him. Phil Melcher, great security man here at Bush Stadium. Uh, you think you're going to get away with something? Nope. Mm, not on Phil's watch. Not up in here. <laughs> Three balls, no strikes. And the old automatic right through there. It's three and one. Cardinals first day of July has been a lot of fun. Full count. He's had plenty of fun too with a four RBI day. Paul Goldschmidt will be your next Cardinals batter. Three balls two strikes. The runners lead and go. And it's on the ground to the right side. Nice play LeMayhew. Throw to the bag, and Abreu got there in time. And that will send us to the seventh. All Cardinals in game one. Well, Brad, T, today's uh, BJC Healthcare Difference Maker is the man on the mound, Jack Flaherty. Needed him to start quickly. He did, and the Cardinals offense supporter. Well, you remember last time out, it was the hip issue that didn't allow him to pitch in London. And, boy, the hip looked good. The arm looked good. The execution looked good for Jack Flaherty. Six strong innings. Look at him like a cat out there on the mound helping himself out. That's what they needed out of Jack in this one. Six strong as the Cardinals have been rolling.
So James Neal will follow him as the Cardinals go to work in the top of the seventh inning. Isaiah Kiner Falefa will lead off. Billy McKinney and Anthony Volpe. Pick a lane. That's IKF up there. <laughs> That's tipped and caught. Strike one. I like the sinker slider combination of nail. Good movement on that one. IKF went around. No balls, two strikes. It's really important when a guy's in the major leagues to not have a name that's too long to write in your scorebook, right? As a two strike knock into left. Gets things started for New York in the seventh. That's right, kids. If you have a long last name, shut it down now. <laughs> Jim Hayes has a short last name, but he's got a lot of long reports. Jimmy? Uh, I'm going to keep this one short. It was just over a year ago, June 27th. Nail got his first big league call up. He's been on the Memphis shuttle a few times since. Nail told me he's a different pitcher now. He said, My velocity on every pitch I throw is up. My velocity on the breaking stuff is way up. Chip, he says the improvements came from working with Dusty Blake in the offseason and putting in a lot of work. Yeah, let's see if that hard work in the offseason is put to good use here as he'll try to soak up a few innings for the Cardinals, preserve that bullpen for game two and potentially tomorrow afternoon as well. Billy McKinney is 0 for 2. Yankees have just five hits today. Out of play, one ball, two strikes. Imagine we'll see Harrison Bader in game two. Longtime popular Cardinal who was traded to the Yankees, as you know. They're going to see Giancarlo Stanton as well. If the lineup stays close to what it looked like yesterday, they had Harrison Bader to center. And Newt Bars got that one out. They had Harrison Bader right there in the middle of it, batting fourth. So we'll see what he does against Matthew Libertori. No, Harrison, very good against the lefties. A phenomenal center fielder. Plays with incredible energy and gets to do so in front of his hometown Yankees. So looking forward to watching him out there. Don't recognize him with the closely cropped haircut, though. Looks a little different. Oh, he's pulling it? it off, yeah. Volpe, the batter. And takes high and tight. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, the Yankees are and have always been short haircut, no facial hair policy. So Bader looking clean in the Yankees road grays. I feel like that's one I could pull off, Chip. Short haircut, no facial hair, done. Done and done. I can see you in the pinstripes. Could you? One one pitch. Is popped into left. That's going to get down in front of Walker for a base hit. So two on, one out in the seventh inning. Volpe's first hit. Again, he's got three straight games with multi hits. And there you see. Intensity still there. The locks are a little bit different. But some big energy and excitement coming out of Harrison Bader I mean remember last year he was traded over he was injured at the time but tore it up in the postseason for the Yankees five home runs in October what do you remember most about Harrison the as a card yeah the, the energy and the excitement that he played with you know Harrison Bader was a guy that, that went out there and he just played hard like you give him a, a, you give him a jersey he's in the lineup don't care where you put him he's going to play hard you, you love playing with a teammate like that you know they love him there in the Bronx. But that was a good baseball trade, right? It was one where the Yankees were in need of a center fielder. Cardinals were in need of some starting pitching. Jordan Montgomery came over and did a fantastic job. That one gets away, and the runners will move up. Nails having a little trouble here in the seventh inning. I think you made a great point. That those are the kinds of deals you want to see happen, where both teams feel like they came out winners in the deal, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, that is generally the goal when you're a team trying to make a, a trade. And for the Yankees, they had to be patient, wait for Harrison Bader to come back. He ended up 
coming back and making a big impact on their biggest stage and Jordan Montgomery made an impact early. So a passed ball puts runners at second and third for New York and Oswaldo Cabrera who's had a tough day of field tries to improve on his one for two day at the plate Yankees are trying to avoid being shut out it's 11 nothing St. Louis. Padres lead the Reds 12 5 that games in the ninth inning in St. Louis starts play today 10 games behind the first place Reds who have a one game lead over Milwaukee and that one inside the bag at third will spoil the shutout that'll score IKF and the Yankees have first and third with one out. It's an 11 one game. Uh, those ones are frustrating. Just a good inside out swing goes the other way with it. If that pitch is down I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Plaza tire service pitch track wants it down. You see Kisner tapping the ground. It ends up being up just allows Cabrera to get to it. So Nail could use the double play ball. He's got the catcher up, Agashioka. And in for a strike. Believe it or not, this man in the batter's box is the longest tenured Yankee. Really? Yep. Wow. I recall Gary Sanchez was supposed to be the catcher of the future in New York, but it never really worked for them. Especially on the defensive side of things, and he's since moved on, and Higashioka's taken over as he tries to handle this pitching staff. 1 1 count. That was close. But when you're wild, you don't get the close ones. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Got to be able to repeat that. I think that's the pitch right there, too. That good sinker down at the bottom of the zone. There's your ground ball, there's your double play. Put it down there again. Two and two. Corbin Burns and Johan Oviedo are the scheduled pitchers in Pittsburgh. If and when they get going with bad weather. Up at PNC Park. Now the two two. That's it. Off the tarp to the right. Get a little cloudy here at the ballpark. Yeah, I didn't want to hear the tarp word at all. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, but no, no, nobody, grounds crew not attending to the tarp yet, so that's good. Got a, a baby hmm. at the game. Good seats there. Fly ball to right. Dylan Carlson comes in. The runner at third tags will not advance. And there's your second out. Top of the order coming up for New York. Fans embrace your inner all star. The action starts with the T Mobile Home Run Derby on ESPN. That's July 10th at 6 Central. Then catch the 93rd MLB All Star Game brought to you by MasterCard. That's July 11th from Seattle. Game time 6 Central on Fox. Reserves and pitchers have yet to be announced for the National and American Leagues. As DJ LeMayhew hits one to short. That should end the inning. Flip to second in time. And New York settles for one as we stretch in St. Louis with a 10 run lead. It was all the Cardinals' offense needed, and Paul Goldschmidt's the man that provided it. Yeah, he was on a very good slider that was down in the zone, 386 feet into the Cardinal bullpen. Got things going. The Cardinals continue to add on your Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud, and I don't want to see that, Chip. Yeah, the tarp is being pulled out here. No rain at the ballpark at the moment, but I'm guessing that Lance Barksdale, when he talked with the Cardinals grounds crew here, saw that a bad cell was approaching. A lot of pop-up thunder showers hit us here yesterday. 
And out of an abundance of caution, Lance Barksdale wants to make sure that the field's going to be, shall we say, in good shape for the rest of this game. But Brad, potentially, you got to think about the nightcap too. No, no question. And uh, yeah, bad weather is heading in. You want to be ahead of it, certainly. And fortunately for the Cardinals, they're ahead of things in every single way in this ball game. They've been taking care of business. Don't know how long this one is going to last, but better safe than sorry for not just the field, but for everybody here at attendance at Bush Stadium. Yeah, so they'll head to the concourse and maybe out to Ballpark Village and get refreshed on this hot, sticky day as the Cardinals have a 10-run lead and lead this one by an 11-1 score with the nightcap we hope to follow around 6:15 central time and when that one happens it'll be Matthew Libertor and the rest of the New York Yankees bullpen so we are in a Helitech rain delay no rain yet in St. Louis but bad weather swirling around the ballpark and we will continue from Bush Stadium it's game one Cardinals and Yankees and the Redbirds enjoy a big league. And one, the Cardinals have a big lead. Well, a well pitched game for the Redbirds. They've been swinging the hot bat and they've been pouring it on the Yankees. Looks like it's going to be pouring on everybody here at Bush Stadium, but you love how the Cardinals are taking care of business. And it's an official game. We've got that under our belts here in St. Louis. 11 1 your score. We'll step aside, and in a moment, Alexa Dat will take over from our Valley Sports Midwest studios here at Ballpark Village as the Cardinals and Yankees wait out bad weather in St. Louis. there in the distance. Yeah, the storm moving a little quicker than we would probably like. We saw some bad weather last night in this one as the game was postponed. Obviously, that's why we are attempting to play a doubleheader here today. Hello, everyone. Alexa Dat here in our Valley Sports Studios at Ballpark Village. So we're going to keep you entertained for a little bit here on Valley Sports until we figure out exactly what is going to happen with this game. And remember, we do have game two, which is currently scheduled first pitch at 615. And then this series is scheduled to close out tomorrow on Sunday. We're going to head back over to Bush Stadium. Brad Thompson is joining me, who was just on the call. And Brad, this is the month that the uh, you know Cardinals were looking for right turn the page on June even though we did see some good things there but wait a way to kick off July yeah so happy so happy that the <laughs> calendar is changing who knows right who knows what the rest of this month is going to look like for the Redbirds but Alexa they needed something like this they needed the offense to be able to explode we've talked about this a lot that the offense is going to be a huge key as to what this team is going to do down the stretch they have length in their lineup they've got tons of power they've shown some of that off in this ball game today but the pitching is going to have to solidify and that's something we've seen from Jack Flaherty in this ball game Alexis six strong innings he bounced back he had two really bad outings in a row where he ended up giving up 12 earned runs in 10 and two thirds inning he's looked good defense looked good everything in this one against the Yankees I love the approach they had against Severino and they just continued to pile on in this ball game let's talk about that approach because I feel like this is the offense we were looking for when we first started the season all off you go he got a massage nice six course meal during the rain delay and now Brad in about uh, oh eight nine ten minutes we're going to resume what is now an 11 1 Cardinals game a lot of amenities here at Bush Stadium that I didn't even know we could take advantage of it's fantastic it was beautiful I am relaxed and the Cardinals should be too after this uh, this delay that they've had and what a game it has been early on your Budweiser plays of the game is this Cardinals offense chip they have been outstanding you said Bring the thunder. That's exactly what they did early and often. Yeah, it is true. I wasn't hoping for the rain delay, but that part came in as well. Look, the Cardinals offense got it done. They had a really good approach against Luis Severino, and they hit some tough pitches, too. It wasn't all just mistakes from him. They did a great job, powered up, and had some clutch hits as well. Cardinals clobbered Luis Severino for nine runs, Crook for two, Abreu. Got two outs in the sixth inning, and when play resumes, the Cardinals will come up in the home seventh with an 11-1 lead in game one with a second game against the Yankees to follow this evening. In game one, we've got a few more minutes to go before we resume. The first of what was to be a split doubleheader. Well, it's going to be a traditional doubleheader. Game two will follow about 30 minutes after we wrap up game one. So if you're in the neighborhood and you don't have plans, come on out to Bush Stadium for the Cardinals and the Yankees. We'll try to wrap up an 11-1 Cardinal lead here in game one in just a few minutes. 
were bright sunny skies overhead. There was no sign of rain in the immediate vicinity of the ballpark. And as soon as the Cardinals grounds crew got the infield covered about three minutes later the skies opened and it just stopped raining here in St. Louis about 30 minutes ago. Yeah Chip there's something to that radar thing. These guys know what they're doing. Bill Finley and his crew did a fantastic job of making sure that tarp was on keeping the field as playable as possible. You know Bush Stadium drains very well. I'm not sure I've seen that much water on the actual track. It was pouring into the dugouts pouring into the seats but uh, the field looks great right now. Long Long delay a tough one but Cardinals are in a really good position right now an 11 1 victory they want to seal this thing up quickly and they have a chance to gain a game on the Reds who were defeated earlier today by the San Diego Padres and of course the Cardinals with another game to follow this afternoon there's Bill Finley he and his grounds crew do a remarkable job you're exactly right the field looks practically pristine after two straight hours of not just sprinkling rain Brad but heavy rain and not just today but last night too. Oh yeah, the the field has taken a beating for sure, and that is a, a job that probably doesn't get as much love as it should. But his entire crew, they work here tirelessly to get this thing ready. And look, this is a game yet again. The, the Cardinals need this. Cardinals need uh, started action today. Ten games back in the division. Look, they're five games back of fourth place. A lot of things need to fall in place, and everything in this ball game was falling in place for the Birds. The offense was great. The starting pitching with Jack Flaherty doing his thing has looked good and the hope is that the bullpen nails it down. How hard is it to ramp up your intensity to game level after being in the clubhouse for two and a half hours ostensibly? You know now? what it is difficult especially right now you're going out on the field you're playing catch you see the atmosphere in the stadium fans are still trickling in for everyone watching at home right now fans that have stuck around for this game uh, they're uh, obviously able to stay but you've got the gates opening for game two as well so it's just an interesting transition time but I tell you when you lock in is when you're on the mountain you're throwing a pitch or you're in the box and you're taking an at bat you'll lock in fairly quickly so the man that has to lock in for the Yankees is Nick Ramirez he is the third Yankees reliever to toil today he'll answer their Chevy call to the bullpen and as this series continues this game game two and tomorrow with Garrett Cole if they have to use their bullpen Brad that is one of the great strengths of the Yankees they have an excellent shutdown relief staff yeah they really do the back end of their pen has been strong and this is one where they were hoping to get even more length you know out of Severino in this ball game. he lasted four. Cardinals chased him but get to these guys we're going to find out bullpen games are not the easiest to prepare for that's what the Cardinals are going to have in store in game two so Paul Goldschmidt who started for St. Louis had three RBIs in, uh, on a three run homer in the third inning a fourth RBI on a sacrifice fly he's going to be taken down after the long break and he'll be ready I'm sure for game two so Oscar Mercado is going to step in and pinch hit for the Cardinals who lead by 10 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Mercado Gorman Dylan Carlson the trio for St. Louis and after a rain delay that began at 332 central time at 550 we are back in action with a foul ball for Mercado that first swing will loosen you up a little bit too and a fly ball hit toward left Bowers is Johnny on the spot hardly had to move and that's how the Cardinals home seventh begins to look at our T-Mobile coverage cam Nolan Gorman boy did he pose after a fourth inning bomb yeah you should on this one fastball up and in under the hands of Gorman first pitch he saw he knew he was going to go with the heater and he was ready to beat him to this spot what a beautiful thing that was so Gorman takes a strike let's see if he can hit a second homer here in the seventh inning if the Cardinals do that your Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation in our Honda home run inning. And a wicket breaking ball has Nolan behind. Oh, and two. A cue shot right there. That slow slider from Ramirez had him out in front. Some interesting colors there on the glove of Ramirez. What color is that? What color are those laces? Teal? Mint mint works Ooh, Brian yeah. Shapiro our producer said mint that's pretty good It's good if he was pitching for the Marlins or the athletics that would be a little bit more of 
the color scheme the Yankees have the black and the gray. Brian Shapiro says mint unbelievable two balls two strikes that's whacked into left and that'll bounce in for a base hit. So a two hit game for Gorman and the Cardinals offensive fireworks continue with a one out single chip this is what we saw from Gorman early in the season when he was really locked in he had the ability to hit light tower home runs pull side but he'd also drive the ball that way I think that's a really good sign for him it was a down month last month of June July starting off hot for Gorman and he does it against a left handed pitcher which was something he very seldomly saw in the first eight ten weeks of this season as Dylan Carlson is your batter his first at bat in the game he came on in the fifth inning for the Cardinals replaced Nolan Arenado. Still some standing water on the warning track here at Bush Stadium. That's where a lot of the drainage takes place especially down past the Yankees dugout and down the left field line. I mean, if there's a pop fly there somebody's going to be rolling through some mud puddles. Nothing in two. And up and away. One ball, two strikes. Remember, the tarp is dumped in left field, so right behind the third baseman and shortstop, you can see a very thin red line. That, that infield clay that accumulates on the tarp gets dumped there in a straight line as that ball hit toward third, and the Yankees around the horn take care of the Cardinals in the seventh. 11 1 St. Louis. We head to the eighth. Out of the season for the Cardinals, and that Hardy fan is still enjoying himself after a two hour and 19 minute rain delay. Today. Yeah, that kid needs more cotton candy chip. We're gonna get on that one. We can make that happen on the assignment. Get Jim Hayes involved as the Yankees come up in the eighth inning. Jake Bowers leads off. How about James Nail? He hasn't pitched in two hours and 20 minutes, and he's back to work. Well, good for him. Be able to stay ready. You're sure he was keeping some heat on that shoulder on that elbow and ready to rock and you know that assignment too for him it's a long layoff but he wants to be able to lock this thing down with a 10 run lead Bowers 0 for 3 today with a couple of strikeouts and in for a strike Nail gave up a run on three hits in the Yankees seventh that is their lone tally in the game in fact they have just seven hits this is a different looking New York club without Aaron Judge and obviously without John Carlos Stanton in the lineup without Harrison Bader without Josh Donaldson for game one runs today were tough for them to come by and Jack Flaherty who started for St. Louis was terrific six shutout innings all the Yankees can do is watch and wait and hope Mother Nature heals the torn ligament in his toe sooner rather than later. Is that Mother Nature's job? I think so. That's what I guess. Father Time, maybe like That's, Time yeah. might do it. Okay, well, it could be a collaborative effort if you want. Ground ball foul. <laughs> it's a family issue. Exactly right. We know Sergeant Hulk is interested. Lost on me again. Bless your heart. Well, he is, uh, we talked about it earlier in the ball game, a guy that from a competitive standpoint, you like your chances against a judgeless Yankee team. But from just a baseball fan standpoint, you want to see that guy out there. He's one of the best to play the game, prodigious power, just a, a star in this game. So you hope that he gets healthy quickly for the Yankees. Yeah, and one of the great things about the new schedule is that you'll see every team in the major leagues either in your ballpark or on television every single year as ground ball to second. Tommy Edmonds got that. There's the first out of the eighth inning. The shame of that is just the timing of the injury for Cardinals fans and Yankee fans alike here in St. Louis. They wanted to see this guy do his thing in our ballpark and that opportunity will have to wait for a couple of years now. Here's Glaber Torres. Torres one for three. And a strike. Six o'clock in St. Louis. 
It's been all the Cardinals in game one, a two hour and 19 minute rain delay. The Reds were thumped today by San Diego. Milwaukee beat is beating Pittsburgh, I should say, 11 2. That game is late. So a chance for the Redbirds to gain some ground on a couple of their divisional rivals tonight. The Cubs host Cleveland and Marcus Stroman on the hill in just a little while. That missed inside. One ball, two strikes. We'll see how Stroman fares. Remember, he left our game against the Cardinals with a blister problem. That was back in London. Fly ball hit down the line in right. Carlson will run out of real estate. And that'll ricochet around. And a fan from St. Genevieve, Missouri, makes the play after the long rain delay. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Look at that ball explode. That was impressive. Nails first strikeout, two away. Well, your Plaza Tire Service pitch track. It's the good breaking ball here from James Nail. The slower curveball. He's got the slider as well, and that was a good one. That was the pitch he was trying to throw two pitches ago that he was able to foul off. Anthony Rizzo is up. This guy is fearless. And the way he crowds the plate, man, oh, man, he almost eliminates one half of the dish. Doesn't it really he? does. He really does. And the thing is, even if you execute a pitch in there, he can foul it off and he can get to it, too. He, he can get his hands in. So he, he really does try to make what would be middle away really to him ends up being middle in. You see him step into the box right there in the front. That front chalk line at this point is gone, but he is right there on the dish. I would imagine that makes the plate look like a postage stamp. For sure. For sure. When, when you're throwing to when you ha you know that if you're going to go in, you better make sure you get it in there. And especially being a guy that has sink like James Nail does, you got to start it almost at his knee to be able to bring it back. Good and example. Then, and then for Rizzo, if you do go inside, he's not afraid to get hit. He's been plunked 212 times as a major league batter. Yeah, at some point, you know, you. You just get used to it. I think that he's about there. In fact, he's been hit by a pitch five times in the last 15 games while hitting for the Yankees. I mean, that's just stubbornness is all that is. I guess it's worked out quite well for him. Well, he's had a wonderful career. There's yeah, no is. doubt. Cancer survivor started with the Padres, went to the Cubs. Now in his second full season in New York, and he takes outside on a close pitch. And Rizzo's aboard a two out walk here in the eighth inning. Let's enjoy now a quick word from BJC Healthcare. <laughs> Isaiah Kiner Falefa. That's fun to say. Takes a strike. It's been 50 50 on the day has yeah, it? Well, we're trying that. to we're trying I'm look I'm trying to make you happy and I'm trying to make me happy. Look uh, you worry too much about pleasing others. Just say what comes naturally. <laughs> it's obviously Isaiah kind of Falefa instead of IKF. Ike 0 oh and 2 is his count. You like, like that better. I like that actually. OK. I'm not sure if he does but. He's, he's scored, way down there. Scored, and he can't catch me. He scored the only Yankees run, and that looked like strike three, but just a bit low. One ball, two strikes. Well, if James Nail stays down there, all that he's going to be able to do is beat that ball into the ground. Ground that will probably play a little bit slower right now with some of the rain that it took, although the infield was covered very quickly. Yeah I, I think if uh, the Cardinals and Yankees had played on another 20 minutes and had gotten trapped by the start of rain. Oh yeah. Game two might have been a big problem. It rained that hard here. So that truly was a smart and fortuitous decision for all of us. Once this game ends we'll need 30 35 minutes or so to reset and 
we'll get right back to game two action here at Bush Stadium. And the three two is lofted out of play off to our right. That's happened before. Look you can't gauge how hard it's going to rain. You just do your best. But sometimes it rains so much that you put the diamond dry on then cover the infield and it just it doesn't allow any evaporation at all. It becomes yep. just a, a crusty layer on top of a mud pie. And that's inside back to back walks with two outs. Dusty Blake's going to go slowly to the mound here. The Cardinals don't want to get anybody warmed up. But James has had one, two, three, four, five, six base runners now. And this trouble comes with two outs in the eighth inning. Well, and as you mentioned, not an easy assignment for James Nail, who was out there before the delay. You have two plus hours of trying to stay ready. And Dusty, right now, just giving him a second, is like, hey, we know. We know what you're doing for us right now. Start that sinker down the middle. Let it work. Don't be too fine. Let these guys get themselves out because right now James Nail, I know it doesn't feel like it. It's a 10 run game. This is a big job. He's eating up some innings here. And it will be appreciated by his pen mates, his manager, and the rest of his teammates. But he has thrown 26 pitches in this eighth inning. And again, he's pitching after a two hour and 19 minute delay. So. He'll face Billy McKinney now. McKinney 0 for 3. Billy has struck out. He's grounded out. He's flied out. And he's been running all over the place in right field today for New York. Yeah, he has been busy there a couple of times playing a little bit more shallow, and the Cardinals have gotten it over his head. Drew Verhagen starting to play catch in the St. Louis bullpen. On the ground slowly to second. Great job by Nail. He gives the Cardinals two relief innings in a rainy game one. It's 11 1 St. Louis. Guys have opened up yet again here in St. Louis and the Cardinals grounds crew has to carry that waterlogged and very heavy tarp across the infield yet again. Uh, the forecast has been calling for rain pretty much all evening tonight Brad and I I'm told that we could not just say that the first game was official call that one off and then go ahead and prepare to start game two game one had to be completed before the Cardinals and Yankees could finish up the makeup game yeah. for what was scheduled this afternoon in St. Louis today. Yeah from my understanding as well it was uh, MLB rules if you were going to stop that first game and call it finished you'd have to do it the same with the second so grounds crew doing the same thing they did before making sure they get out there before this heavy rain hits so you can end up salvaging the field for the rest of this game and the hope is the second one but we are at the mercy of the forecast and mother nature on this one yeah you too. question mother nature with a big toe that's what Correct. caused the problem she's mad at you wow. but this is one of the difficulties of the new schedule the Yankees are only going to make one visit to St. Louis so every effort has to be made to try to get these games in because neither club wants to think about having New York fly back into St. Louis where both teams lose an off day to make up one or maybe even two games potentially head to head two games that the way the Cardinals hope to play and two games for the Yankees as well that will be very meaningful and important no for sure you do whatever you can to get these in that's a hope maybe this is a quick sell that runs through and we finish this bad boy up because Josh Donaldson was getting ready to pitch in fact he was taunting the Cardinals saying you're afraid and you're making it rain on me and my Yankees but it's 11 1 it's yet another Helitech rain delay and we will continue from waterlogged Bush Stadium in St. Louis in just a few moments. 
of young men's nightmares. You know, maybe give you stories to tell yeah. at the end of it, but they have been very busy. The rounds crew, uh, crew doing a fantastic job making sure they're getting that tarp on right before these storms pop up. Their radar is a heck of a lot better chip than mine is. Didn't see that one coming, but the skies opened up. Did a good job of getting the tarp on, get it off quickly, and hopefully finish this ball game up. Yeah, Bill and his staff are going to get a big hand, and they should. They've done amazing work in keeping this field at least reasonably playable here this afternoon. You see the groundskeeper still doing some work out in left center field, scraping up the remnants of clay. And you can see the standing water now as he takes the shovel and moves toward the foul line. Look at that. Water still pooling up. As you said, this field drains very well. It is a new playing surface here in the last couple of weeks, but it is being tested this weekend. Well, it has, and it, it has taken on so much water already but appears to be and especially the infield in fantastic condition because I really don't think that there has been any rain really open up and, and catch that infield just a little bit there that half inning as Josh Donaldson was getting ready to start throwing but other than that the infield stayed pretty dry and as we said Aaron Boone's going to be using a bullpen game in game two should it come and with the rains falling Josh Donaldson a chance to live every position players dream in the major leagues he was about to make his first pitching appearance in the show and it was delayed for about 15 minutes but he is back out there and ready to go Brad and he is not unfamiliar with pitching he was a pitcher in high school in his days in Mobile Alabama well, I'm sure he was and I'm sure he was a stud back there back in the day now this is according to perfect game he was clocked with a max velo of 81 miles per hour that sounds familiar to me that was in January of 2003 Got a feeling he might still he, he was slinging some of them up there. Now let's look at this game today. Here comes the pitch arsenal. Oh no what what do you got. Jordan Walker has a 17 game hitting streak on the line and he's got it extended against a position player. Well just got his new best bolt that's 86 right there. He's grown up quite a bit since 2003. Oh, streak still counts right. Got to get it rolling. I don't think he was expecting that. Pop fly foul back toward us, and just like that, it's 0-2. Look at Josh. He's trying not to laugh. He's getting encouragement from the Yankees dugout. In a game like this, you got to find a way to make it fun from the New York perspective. Been playing catch with a breaking ball for quite some time. Here comes something. Up the middle at second. Nice pick, Torres, and the scoop at first is in time. And Walker's hit streak is in serious jeopardy. There's out number one. Got ahead. Donaldson pulled out the changeup. That circle change. He's been working on that one for the last 13 years playing catch. Very nice play right there at second. Good pick. You know, this is not a guy just up there lobbing it to the play. He's got a respectable fastball. Uh, he's going to have a tough time doing a, a lot of normal operations tomorrow. High fly ball center. IKF to the edge of the warning track. And two steps on it. Makes the play. <laughs> Look at Burleson and Donaldson talking. I'll bet you Josh said, you got to supply the power, kid. And he came up a couple feet short. Is that <laughs> all you got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Missed it by that much. I love it. Just what the Yankees need, another tough reliever. Donaldson's got his first two outs. I mean, he is up there slinging it right now. Turn that one over and missed two balls at a strike. He's about out of bullets right now. He just said fastball's coming. Oh, up and in. Almost got him. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> got a break. There's a foul ball. Something else that helps in a game like this. Donaldson could care less about a pitch clock. No, he's going to let it go. We're going to move quickly. He said, he's, he said I'm going to try to stay away here. 
fly ball again. And look at Josh Donaldson. He's going to walk off the mound. His first big league pitching performance. He gets the Cardinals one, two, three in the eighth. He's their MVP today. It's 11-1. Wrap this one up for the Cardinals as we head to the ninth inning. Brad, it's an 11-1 game, and Verhagen the second Chevy call to the bullpen yeah, today. The hope is for Drew Verhagen ends up being a quick one for him. If he does so, you'd like to believe that he'd still be available for game two. And Verhagen will have the bottom third of the Yankees lineup card to play with. It'll start with Anthony Volpe, who's got a one for three day today. He's trying to extend his multi hit game streak to four here in the ninth inning. Eleven runs, 12 hits for the Cardinals. One run, seven hits, two errors for the Yankees. There's a strike. It's two and one. Just a touch low, tantalizing pitch, but Volpe took it. A pretty good one there, and maybe the thought from Drew Verhagen is he might have better feel, stay back on that breaking ball. Scorch and pass short. So Volpe does extend his multi hit game streak. He's done that in four consecutive, and that was a rifle shot past the diving Cardinal shortstop. Well, I'd still much rather see him try to fill up the zone, use his defense, than end up walking him. Maybe get a ground ball here. Oswaldo Cabrera has a couple of singles and the lone Yankees RBI today. Turned on and ripped foul. Hey, what a catch! And fans from Belleville, Illinois, great fielders across the river. Bring your glove, be ready. Into right center field, that's going to get down for a hit. Cabrera has three singles. And the Yankees have them first and second, and nobody out. You ever been to a Savannah Bananas game? No, but I want to. I want to because that play there, Chip, that would have been an out. Yes. That was loud. That's still a hit. Bananas or not. And Higashioka is coming up. Kyle is one for three today. Yeah, they have all kinds of crazy rules with that Savannah club. And Verhagen with a 10 run lead is pitching behind in the count. I could be wrong on this chip but I think that banana ball rules there's not really a traditional walk like if you walk a guy the guy can continue to run until every fielder on the field touches the baseball too. I think you have to throw it all the way around that's the one of them. I like the uh, entertainment aspect of the game. The players have walk up music, but it's not the walk up music we're used to seeing and hearing in a major league game. They actually have a mariachi band that walks up to the plate with you and plays your favorite song as you get set to hit. Is that right? Yes. 
I kind of dig True that. walk up music. That is that is real deal. Not the fake stuff. They got have. some good dance moves too. I mean these dudes are entertainers. It is a lot of fun. I feel like you could do that chip. I mean you're up here your hips don't lie. <laughs> oh yes they do. <laughs> it's starting to rain again. Oh good. And ball three. Don't you remember the commercials? Don't fool with Mother Nature. This is on you. It's not on me. You said Mother Nature heals injuries. That's, that's not how that works, I don't think. Like, well, who else it, would? I mean, Father Time, maybe. Like, it takes time. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Mel, what do you think about that? Maybe doctors. Mel says Mother Nature. Is it? Yeah. Can it still be a collaborative effort? Uh, not her reigns again. Uh, ball four. Two singles and a walk. And we go back to the top of the order and to DJ LeMayhew. Bill Finley's down by the Cardinals dugout. I think he's talking with the National Weather Service and maybe asking them to tell Mother Nature to make her mind up. I mean, it really is crazy when you're looking at some of the radar. Ground ball to short. Slick baseball, but the Cardinals turn it. The Yankees get a run. And we're an out away. It's 11-2. No RBI, the penalty for the double play. Well, Drew Verhagen doing what he can, getting that rosin bag, trying to keep a grip, and they're going to do everything they can to get this final out of the ball game. But you got to worry about something bigger than this game. You got to worry about the condition of the field for game two. Well, so far, the infield looks to be in pretty good shape. There's no shine, there's no standing water. The mound looks to be pretty secure. Well, this is, I mean, very difficult. Drew Verhagen in this inning has had a tough time with his command anyhow. Not going to get any better with the conditions the way that they are. Jake Bowers, two balls and a strike. And Verhagen needs a new baseball. Nowhere to get your hands dry on a day like this. Two balls and a strike. Swing and a drive through the raindrops. That's an absolute missile by Bowers. Wow. His seventh home run. He picks up his first two RBIs and the Yankees have picked up three here in the ninth. That one 446 feet. He got every bit of this thing and a, a beautiful look at it with the rain coming down. He's now got 28 hits on the season does Jake Bowers. 17 of them are extra base hits. Labor Torres tries to keep the game alive for New York. The Yankees have 10 hits now. Six of them have come in the last three innings. And now the Cardinals are a strike away. Didn't chase it even count. It's raining in Pittsburgh. It's raining in Chicago. It's raining in St. Louis. But we need one more strike. 
to gain a game on the Reds. The pitch. Here comes the 3-2. He walked him. Four walks from the Cardinals relief staff over the last two innings. Nobody is up in the bullpen. You've got a seven run lead. The tarp is covering the Cardinals bullpen mound. And Dusty Blake is going to come out and talk it over with Verhagen as the rain has almost stopped. What precipitation there is is now a mist. Yeah, as we talked about tough conditions anyhow, but even when it wasn't soggy out, Verhagen didn't have the best feel early on, but it's not gotten any easier. And this assignment stinks. I mean, it really does. A game like this, just trying to get that final out, he doesn't have a feel for his stuff right now. But you can't use another reliever. Like, this has got to be it. Got to be able to stop it right here. And I'm sure Lance Barksdale saying, hey, keep us posted on the condition of the mound, too. It's darkened up quite a bit with the accumulation of moisture. And you can see the mud caked cleats for Verhagen as he tries to maintain solid footing here in the ninth inning. Anthony Rizzo, the batter, he's walked twice and has a big swing and fouls it away. Drew in his haste to get this game over with came set too quickly and was warned to wait for Rizzo to be alert. And now he turns her loose and missed. One ball, one strike. Again, Rizzo right on top of that plate. He takes the inner half completely out of the equation for many pitchers. And then you try to go in, you overcook it, you fall behind ever further. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, appear to be three changeups in a row there by Drew Verhagen. You might be thinking, look, seven run game, why would you even be throwing that? He, I think he's trying to find a feel for something that he could throw for a strike at this point. Walk of the inning. And IKF is coming up. They drew Verhagen as home plate umpire Lance Barksdale. They have the grounds crew come out and work on the mound a little bit. It is, I mean, if you don't have your footing, if when you land, if you are sliding, you're not going to be able to land anything. You saw, see he was taking some off of some of those pitches, just trying to navigate the strike zone. And fans will say, just throw it over the plate. Boy, Look, that's easy. Right, right? Well, and, and with all of the help from the stands, the throw a strike crew, that really you would think would help. But take a look at this front foot here. The slide right there, it seems minuscule. But that right there throws you off totally. If you can't stick your landing, if your spikes are not digging in, it makes it very difficult. Now, I'm not trying to explain away this entire inning here for Drew Verhagen, but certainly the last couple of pitches have not been comfortable. See that that one putting a little diamond dry down. He was able to just stick the landing. Yeah, try throwing a baseball while on roller skates or ice skates. Good luck. I've actually never tried that, Chip. Well, maybe a good workout routine for you when the season's over is core stability. I IKF is coming up. Two on, two out, three in in the ninth inning. 11 for your score. And he drops in a strike. Here we go. Cardinals did not want to, but 
they have Henesis Cabrera playing catch. Smoked toward third. Nice pick. 360 spin, and the Cardinals have won it. 11 4 after a couple of rain delays is your game one final. Jack Flaherty picks up the win and looked terrific as did Brad the Cardinal offense. So we'll reset, get you set for game two. Matthew Libertor will face a bullpen game for the Yankees, and the Cardinals go for a doubleheader sweep in about a half hour.